Hello, good evening, and welcome to HB Hole Field in Versailles, where tonight on WOSN we'll bring you a Midwest Athletic Conference matchup between the visiting Coldwater Cavaliers and the homestanding Versailles Tigers. I'm Garrett Seawright, joined alongside John Zerbe, and we'll bring you all the action tonight here from Versailles. And John, two of the state's most storied programs matching up here tonight in Versailles. We're in store for a good one. Yeah, and just being here tonight, Garrett, you can already sense the atmosphere. The fans are excited. The kids are excited on the field. And, you know, looking at the Midwest Athletic Conference right now, this is the premier game with Coldwater in the driver's seat and New, or New Bremen, uh, Marion Loco in the driver's seat as well, New Bremen, Minster, all these games happening tonight. I think this is the premier game. Yeah, we got an 8-0 undefeated Coldwater Cavalier squad, a 6-2 Versailles Tiger squad. That their losses are to New Bremen and Marion Loco, who are also <laughs> going to probably be playing for potentially down the line state championships in December. Yeah, I mean, this is the, the crazy thing about the MAC is that the toughest thing to do is win the MAC championship. I think it's easier yeah. to win a state yeah. championship. So, uh, you know, with Coldwater in the driver's seat and then having Marion local next week, there's a lot on their plate, and this is a big game tonight. So, John, when we take a look at keys to the game, what stands out for you for both sides that, that they've got to accomplish to, to grab a victory tonight? Yeah, sure, Garrett. Let's look at Coldwater first. Uh, play efficiently and spread the wealth on offense. You know, they're, they're really um, – Michael uh, Marcel Blasting Games, their quarterback, who does a lot of great things, but they want to spread the, the ball around, especially to the Harlemert brothers and cousins and, 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 and extended family, you know, all over the place. But also preventing big plays and always being aware of my, where Michael Osborne is. He's going to come in. He's going to do some different things. So just knowing where he's at. And then finally, great special teams for the Cavs tonight. And they generally do play great special teams there at Coldwater. The, the kickoff unit is the punt return unit. Coldwater is known for those special teams that, you know, the PATs are almost always 100% every night for the Cavaliers. And, you know, last week against New Bremen, you know, I was able to watch that game in their punt game, just putting them in bad field position. The entire night was one of the key points of that game as well. For the 6-2 and two Tigers, what do they need to do to grab a victory over Coldwater? Yeah, tonight for the for sales Tigers, they're going to have to make sure they have um, – a tackle they're gonna have to tackle well you know broken tackles is a big thing that Coldwater is going to try to do so they have to have good tackling against a blasting game winning the turnover battle we know in any game like this if you're going to win the turnover battle you're going to put yourself in position to win the game and finally they got to have some explosive plays and um, they, they got to they got to make sure they win those Coldwater is going to take some deep shots uh, they like to get their ball the ball to their skilled receivers but for Versailles to be in this game they have to prevent that to keep themselves in a winning position tonight. It's undefeated Coldwater, it's six and two Versailles, and it's next on WOSN. We're back here at HB Hole Field in Versailles, getting set for this Midwest Athletic Conference matchup between the visiting Coldwater Cavaliers and the home standing for sales Tigers. Take a look there, a closer look at the Cavaliers. 8-0 under 13-year head coach Chip Otten, and then averaging 39 points a game and giving up just nine, just under nine and a half, John. I'm not sure the defensive coordinators in the area like to see that, but then for sales, 6-2, Ryan Jones in his fourth season leading the Tigers. Of course, the reigning Division Five state champions. 28 points per contest to just 11 points given up on the scoreboard as the Tigers will get the football first here tonight. And it's the first meeting since 2019 with the way the MAC does the schedules. Uh, everything shook out that these two squads weren't the, were, were the ones who didn't play each other. And, um, you know, might have went all right for, for Sales and Coldwater, both playing for state championships <laughs> a year ago. But uh, they're rekindling this rivalry for the first time since 2019. And then we got football weather <laughs> here tonight. Boy, we got football weather, Garrett. And you're exactly right about that. You see the, the sock hats out there. You see the gloves, the big coats. Uh, it's October, we're in Versailles, and it's Friday night football. Justin Kalp has the football teed up for the Cavaliers, and he'll send it away back deep. Caught just inside the five-yard line by the Versailles Tigers up that far sideline. Huge hole for Joel Garrett, or excuse me, for Peyton Platfoot. He brings it out near the midfield stripe. Versailles, a big play to start the game. They're going to have great starting field position. Yeah, and I think that's the first thing you want to do is you want to kind of gain that momentum early. Uh, they're going to have, like you said, Garrett, great field position, and it allows them to do a lot of things. Number one, I think it allows them to have uh, they're in four-down territory already if they want to if they yeah. want to be a little bit bold in their play calling. So the Versailles offensive line from left to right looks like this. Jared Lyons, Lucas Stammen, Andrew Clark, Zach Cordon, you're an Alex Gilmore, the quarterback, Connor Stonebreaker, the 6'8", 205-pound senior. He's a seat in the shotgun. He'll hand off to Joel Garrett. Takes it out to about the 47-yard line there for Versailles. 
Yeah, Joel Garrett's a nice looking back, 5'9", 190 in high school. That's uh, that's impressive. And only a junior, he's almost at 1,000 yards, and I'm sure he'd like to get there tonight. I, I don't know if he'll be able to against the stiff cold water defense, but you're going to see his number called a lot. So Titus Garrett and Joel Garrett will be in the backfield for the Tigers, and then their wide receivers are A.J. Griesdorn, tight end Ethan Stover, and then Michael Osborne is a do-everything player coming to the bottom of your screen. He wears number 17 for the Tigers. He has four passing touchdowns, four rushing touchdowns, and four receivers touchdowns they'll look to get the ball in his hands tonight and they'll do it right here they sling it to Osborne and he dropped the football yeah you know he's the he's the guy that I think coach Otten was was really concerned about making sure that they knew they identified him they're going to move him around and try to put him in position to uh to get the football you see there they set up a nice screen for him he just forgot to take the football with him so third and six here for the Tigers Coldwater's defense looks like this. Shane Ontrop, Evan Holman, Will Fox, and Cody Defweg are up front. The linebackers, Mason Welsh, Sam Obringer, and Jack Ebbing. And then the back four, Curtis, Curtis Dewar, John Mullenkamp, Blade Busher, and A.J. Harlemert. So third and six here. Stonebreaker will be in the gun with Titus Garrett to his right. And Joel Garrett lined up in the slot to the bottom of your screen. Stonebreaker rolls, nearly intercepted by Coldwater as Cody Defweg got his mitts on it. Yeah, it's a dangerous pass. It's right under the flat, and, you know, if uh, he catches that pass, he's going to score. I mean, there was no one out there in front of him, and, you know, early on, Coldwater answers that big kickoff return on uh, making uh, Versailles uh, put it, putting them in a pump position right now. So fourth and six for the Cavaliers, or for the Tigers, excuse me, and A.J. Griesdorn will punt for the Tigers. Reese Dorn gets a boot away. A.J. Harlemert back deep to return for the Cavaliers. He'll try to slip a tackle. Brought down inside the 15-yard line is a nice play there by Ethan Stover. Cuts him down in the open field. Yeah, I like what Stover did. He got down there. He set his feet and uh, t uh, made a great tackle. It's going to give Versailles really nice uh, field position starting for them defensively. So the Cavalier offense comes to the field now. and Much like Michael Osborne does a little bit of everything, for the Tigers, Marcel Blasengame does the same for the Cavaliers. 1,100 yards through the air and 12 touchdown passes, 1,100 yards and 17 touchdown runs for number five in the shotgun there. We'll go through the Coldwater offense after this next play as the 6'1 senior will keep it himself off left tackle, shoved backwards, got back to the line of scrimmage before he's brought down by a Tiger defender. Yeah, I think, you know, th this is going to be the key tonight is what Blasting Game does. And I think whenever you see this empty formation, Garrett, you're going to see Blasting Game and a running, uh, it's going to be a called running play. And we've seen that over the, the course of this season. But he does a fantastic job, not only on his feet, but in the air as well. Coldwater offensive lineman Evan Holman, Braden Klosterman, Cade Wenning the center, Shane Ontrop and Will Fox will anchor things up front for the guys in white. That's Depweg to the right of Blasting Game. In the gun, dropping back to pass, looking to go deep. Has a man along this near sideline. He'll chuck it to him. It's caught by the Cavaliers as Curtis Dewar slips a tackle, and Curtis Dewar is gone. An 83-yard touchdown strike on the second play of the game for the Cavaliers gives them an Allen Davis insurance touchdown. Well, and I think we talked about it in pregame, Garrett. We talked about the deep shots that Coldwater likes to take, and, boy, what a fantastic job. Uh, 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 Curtis Dewar there was uh, on the inside on that trips formation, and he came right across the field on a post route. It took a long time for that play to develop. He actually came open really early, and uh, the ball seemed to be in the air quite a bit. But what a big play, and what a turn of events really early, really early in this game. So an 83-yard Allen Davis insurance touchdown strike there for the Cavaliers. To, uh, John, we talked about it, that field position. They had been kind of shoved back into the shadows of their own goalpost and get out of it on the second play of the game as now Kalp comes on to kick the extra point for the Cavaliers. The snap back, the hold is down, the kick is up, and the kick is no good. So the score remains 6 nothing after the missed PAT, and Coldwater leads 6 nothing here on WOSN. Tonight's Red Zone brought to you by Betty's Natural Foods. They're your partner for better health. Visit bettysnaturalfoods.com to learn more. Cavaliers with a 6-0 advantage after that 2-yard, 85-yard touchdown drive 
83 of it coming on the c completion from Blazing Game to Curtis Dewar. And now Versailles looks to go back to work as Plattfoot will get the football inside his own five-yard line. A similar look at what they had last time. A penalty flag comes in as the ball is brought down at the 30-yard line. A second penalty flag comes in. So we'll see if maybe we have offsetting fouls between both squads here. Yeah, and getting back to the touchdown earlier, Garrett, I mean, as we look at this kickoff return here, ni nice kickoff return, and something Coldwater is going to want to do, they're going to want to kind of clean up their uh, their kickoff team, um, especially, you know, after that. There's, we're going to get a penalty here, so they're going to get good field position, but they don't really want to consistently give Versailles uh, that start. But getting back to that touchdown play, uh, you know, what a gutsy call because we talked about field position. We talked about how deep – uh, cold water was to begin the game and that was a, a long developing mm -hmm. play and you, you get a sack down there and now you're really you know you're, you're really in a dangerous spot and boy what a gutsy call by coach Ott and I like it well and on that first play you saw maybe some of the offensive linemen from cold water get shoved back a little bit and to yeah. you know draw up a play that hey we're, we're gonna have to take some time here <laughs> uh, that it was an interesting call but it worked out for the Cavaliers as the Tigers go back to work they'll hand off to Garrett up the middle he spun down at, by Sam Obringer, middle linebacker, for the Cavaliers. Gain of two there on first down for the Tigers. Yeah, and you can see this defensive line of Coldwater. They pursue. They get after it. Uh, they come off the ball. And uh, like I said, just they got guys all over the place. Obringer came from the middle linebacker position, but he came on a blitz off the edge and came down inside and made that nice play. So second in about seven here for the Tigers. A stonebreaker in the gun. Garrett to his left. He'll turn and pitch to Joel Garrett. Tries to get that corner. Breaks through the cold water defense and picks up a first down. A Wright State Lake Campus first down for the Versailles Tigers. Their first of the night. Yeah, I like that. I like that play call. Uh, just a, a sweep to the short side of the field, and you see Garrett cut it back and put his shoulders down and, and really carry some guys for some first uh, for a first down. And, you know, something that uh, Versailles is uh, in, in need of right now just to try to get some momentum back. Joel Garrett with five touchdown carries on the season and just under 900 yards through eight weeks of the football season uh, as a guy who we're probably going to call his name an awful lot here. And, and, John, how important is it for the Tigers to control a little bit of that clock here tonight? Well, I think it's big because you've just seen you don't want Colorado to have the ball very much. So as much as you can uh, have that ball possession, the more it's going to put you in a better position to win this game. Another first down run here by Joel Garrett. He'll move the chains for another Wright State Lake campus. First down, back-to-back -back first down carries here. Take a look at that Layfeld Welding and Industrial Supplies replay. Just very patient running there by the junior. Yeah, and, and the thing about that is that, uh, you know, they're sticking with their game plan. It's easy to get down and then to start calling different kinds of pass plays. And, you know, but they're just sticking with the game plan. Co uh, Coach Jones is just going to make sure that uh, they're doing what they do and doing what they do best. Ryan Jones in his fourth season. Of course, the Tigers won the 2021 Division Five State Championship a season ago. We'll have a false start here on the Tigers as I believe a wide receiver got going just a bit too soon. That'll push them behind the chains. And, you know, typically, uh, especially in the Midwest Athletic Conference, you, you see a pretty clean game. Um, and so far we've seen a couple penalties, and I think that just kind of shows the, um, the magnitude of this game. I think we, you, you have some pregame jitters. You can feel it and kind of sense it here in the, in the crowd on the Versailles side. Uh, they're, they're, they're into this game, and, you know, the kids are feeling that as well. Well, and you, you play somebody like Coldwater that you already, you know, you feel like, okay, we've got to be perfect and if we mess up. That snowball starts rolling downhill, and, and you saw, you know, you give up a long touchdown, and uh, Versailles obviously is a type of team who can, who can you know, fight through some adversity here, and we'll see that on first and 15 and another penalty flag before the snap. Well, the margin of error is small. I mean, you know, when you're playing a cold water, you have got to be on point, and right now uh, Versailles is just having a really hard time putting things together. So first and 20 now for the Tigers after a pair of false start penalties. Still eight and a half minutes to go here in this first quarter. And first and 20, John, from a coach's perspective, what, what are you trying to accomplish here on first down? Well, I think you're just trying to get like 10 yards back. I mean, I, you're not trying to get all 20. Maybe just a big gain, you know, because you want to put yourself where it's third and six or third and five. So on these next two downs, you know, trying to get enough yards to put yourself in decent third down position. So first and 20. They'll send Osborne in motion, hand off to Garrett. He'll push his way back up to the – 31-yard line, so a game of about two and a half there for Garrett on first and 20. And that's a good play. I mean, that's something that they needed, and, 
you know, they're, they're going to have to do the same thing here. You know, one of the things we talked about a little bit before, uh, before the game got started, Garrett, is last time these two teams have played was in 2019. They've, they haven't played even since COVID. I mean, it's yeah. been yeah. forever, you know. <laughs> like, they, like They played the before times, yes, you know. Yeah. The whole world has changed since <laughs> the last time they played. And, uh, and you're right, and Versailles obviously has come a long way. They lost 42-7 to in that matchup, but obviously much more formidable uh, in Ryan Jones' fourth, third and fourth seasons here at Versailles. Stonebreaker back to pass, looking over the middle of the field, has Osborne, he's got the first down and more. Spins out of a tackle into cold water territory at the 40-yard line, and Michael Osborne has a Wright State Lake Campus first down. Well, those two penalties don't end up hurting Versailles. You know, they run a really nice pass pattern. A Stonebreaker uh, hits Osborne right across the middle on a, on a deep poster out there and uh, gets a, a really nice-looking play to give Versailles a little bit of momentum. So a first down pushes for sales into cold water territory as they trail 6-0 here as the clock continues to tick in this first quarter. Osborne now lined up at, sh uh, in the, at the quarterback position. Stonebreaker at the top of your screen. Osborne fakes the handoff, looks to throw. Pressured, and he's going to be sacked. A big play there made by Jack Ebbing. The linebacker for Coldwater. And I think Jack Ebbing was on a delayed blitz there, Garrett. Uh, comes, you can see him kind of uh, come through late. And, and, and one of the things about putting Osborne in at quarterback, you know, typically when you come in and you, and you bring another kid in to, to run, uh, to play quarterback, you're going to have some kind of run or, the, you know, it's kind of, they don't say the Wildcat anymore. That's kind of already come and gone. But, uh, you know, Versailles will throw the ball with, uh, with Osborne, and that's uh, something that obviously Coldwater has uh, prepared for and knew he was uh, going to have a pass play. So second and 20 now for the Tigers, a little different situation than the last time they were faced with 20 yards to pick up the first down, but Osborne will remain in the shotgun once again and he will keep it himself this time off right tackle lost his footing just a split second before he hit that hole and that's going to bring up third and very long they ran a trips formation and the interesting thing was is that uh and, and this is I, I believe a scouting thing uh their number one and their number three receiver were covered man to man you know like a press coverage up they left the number two receiver completely uncovered so that must be something that they're seeing on film uh, when Osborne's in the game at quarterback, that they're not even going to uh, cover that number two receiver. Just something to keep in mind as the game goes on. So third and about 18 and a half here for the Tigers as Osborne will line up in the second receiver at the top of your screen. Stonebreaker, the six foot eight senior, back in the gun, looking to throw. Will bring it down the near sideline. A jump ball for Peyton Platfoot can't make the corral. As a nice defensive play there made by Curtis Dewar, who caught the 83-yard touchdown for the Tigers, and that'll bring up fourth and long. Yeah, Curtis Dewar's having a nice game so far. He's uh, man coverage on the outside, and that's man to man. And then he had some safety help over the top, but uh, he made that play. It looked like uh, uh, definitely that uh, Peyton Flatfoot had a had a step there, and then uh, Dewar uh, kind of closed that gap at the very end. So AJ Green's doing on to punt once again for the Tigers. As A.J. Harlebert back deep to return. So one of A.J. will boot it to the other. Caught at the 20-yard line. Trying to make one man miss, but A.J. Harlemert cut down in the open field. For 79 for Versailles, Jared Lyons makes the stop in the open field. That's a nice open field tackle there by the big guy. Yeah, absolutely, because Harlemert is dangerous. We've seen him this year be kind of a, a critical piece in the uh, special teams play, uh, especially when uh, the game is tight and they need them uh, him to fair catch it and or make a big play. And we've seen last week against New Bremen, he made several uh, big plays in punt return. So Coldwater goes back to work. They've about uh, more than halfway through this first quarter, and they've had two offensive plays under their belt, but one of them for a touchdown. So I think they'll take that uh, that percentage as Jack Eben gets the carry. He's got a Wright State Lake Campus first down on an 11-yard run to start the drive. Yeah, you see both teams really trying to establish their run game, and I think a lot of that is just trying to establish uh, who's going to win the line of scrimmage up front. And, you know, you look at both of these teams, and they look very similar, I mean, size-wise and, uh, and, and, and skill-wise and even school color-wise, Garrett. <laughs> the, the thing with orange and black, like there are some schools who are black and orange and some schools who are <laughs> orange and black. That's right. And you got to parcel that out. I'm not, I, I, I'm not smart enough for that. <laughs> Marcel Blasingame in the shotgun looking to throw on first and ten to the far sideline. 
And it is corralled by a Cavalier. I believe that's A.J. Harlem along that far sideline. Generally, John, when somebody catches a football for Coldwater, it's a Harlemert, Evan Harlemert, Braylon Harlemert, A.J. Harlemert, all uh, the top leading receivers for the Cavaliers. Well, and that's you're, you're safe tonight just by saying Harlemert. You, you'll be good. Right. You're like 90% chance of getting it right. But what I like what they do is they keep they, they set these plays up and they'll run these hitch routes over and over and over again. Sooner or later you'll see a hitch and go and, and them attempt a deep one. Cavaliers sent a man in motion. Blossom game keeps it himself, has a little bit of running room out to the 45-yard line. Going to be just shy of that first down marker. It's third and short upcoming for the Cavaliers after that carry by Blossom game. I think this is going to be this is going to be the issue tonight is this quarterback run game because typically defenses are not designed to cover the quarterback. Uh, they, they might have a spy on him, but when you put the quarterback in the running game, it really stresses the defense and. Uh, Versailles, they run more of a traditional, old-school kind of defense, mm -hmm. which is good. I mean, if you tackle, any defense can, can play well, but um, it's just gonna, it's going to be an interesting uh, matchup. So third and one, blossom game on the designed quarterback run, gets the right State Lake campus first down, just shy of that midfield stripe, but it is enough to move the chains. And the adjustment there defensively was to go what coaches call cover zero, no safety, everybody matched up man-to-man, -man and putting an extra linebacker there to try to defend the uh, quarterback run. And, John, Versailles still generally their base defense is a 4-4, which you, you don't really see a whole lot anymore. No, 4-4 cover three, and it's not even the, the pattern read stuff. It's kind of the old spot drop. But, like I said, when you're fundamentally sound, especially your defensive line and your linebackers, any defense is going to be good. Blossom game throws to Evan Harlemer along this near sideline. Tries to slip a tackle, but nice open field tackling there by the Cavalier, or by the Tigers, excuse me, as Colton Groff makes the initial stop before he got a little bit of help. But the pass is complete, but a nice coverage here by Colton Groff of Versailles. Well, and I think Coldwater really, it's kind of like you hear it a lot, but they're just giving, you know, they're getting what, what the Versailles defense is giving them. Short routes right now. But they're getting five-yard gains, uh, you know, uh, time after time. And so, you know, until uh, first sales starts to press a little bit, then you're going to see them through these short routes. Braden Henry also combining on the stop for the Tigers. As Blossom game keeps himself, he's tackled in the hole. As another big play made by Jared Lyons there from his defensive line spot. And Lyons showing a little bit of, showing a little nimbleness there in the open field. Got yeah. the, the punt return tackle. And then right there you see 79 fights off a double team and is able to cut down Blasen game on that Layfield Industrial and Welling Supplies replay. Well, that was a perfect fundamental tackle. I mean, he had his head in front. His shoulders were square. He's got 41 tackles on the season, so um, he's he's dynamic inside on that uh, Versailles defensive line. Third and six here for the Cavaliers. They'll look to throw. Blossom game on the roll. Fires. It's caught and then dropped. Big stick made by the Tigers, as I believe Curtis Dewar was the intended target. Had it in the breadbasket there for just a moment. We'll take a look at the Layfeld Industrial and Welding Supplies replay. Well, and that's that's kind of where, you know, and I wasn't being critical of running an old school defense. I, I That's the same defense I ran as a coach, so I believe in it. But that's kind of where that, that, that mindset comes. You're going to give that up. But when the ball is caught or as they're catching it, you're going you're gonna to punish them by, by smacking them a little bit. And you've seen that there, that there was a man open, but they made him pay for it, and he ended up dropping it. Braden Henry forces the incompletion, and now Justin Calpon to punt it away for Coldwater, nearly blocked. And the ball bounces at the 40-yard line, takes a Coldwater bounce, just a slight one to the 36-yard line of Versailles. Going to have relatively start good starting field position once again here for their third drive. Well, I'd have to say Versailles is really, they have to be pleased with their special teams play here in the first quarter. I mean, their kickoff returns uh, have been good. Uh, there ha was a penalty on their second one, but um, uh, the punt, Punt team has been good, you know, the great coverage. And then now, you know, forcing a really uh, short punt. This is something Coldwater does well is plays great special teams. And last week I seen time and time again how they would pin New Bremen deep within their own territory. So uh, Versailles has something to, uh, to that they're on to here. And any time you can make, you know, an offense have to go 80 yards to score, it's difficult as Michael Osborne takes the snap and will hand off to Garrett. He'll take it out to the 40-yard line. So Joel Garrett, a gain of about... Four yards there on first down. 
Well, I think it just it just number one, you know, going 80 yards is very difficult. There's there's some percentages out there. I don't have them on hand, but you know, when you start at the 10, the percentage is very low that you're going to score. Mm -hmm. When you start at the 20, it's higher, and as the field goes, so you know, if you can start on your you know past your 30, your percentages are much higher uh, that you can score. But I like what Versailles is doing here. They're mixing things up. They're 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 really starting to to get their momentum on their power run game. Approaching one minute to play here in this first quarter on the home and insurance scoreboard as Osborne will keep it himself. Runs into a pile of Cavaliers before he's brought down right at the line of scrimmage as Will Fox in on the stop for the Cavaliers. Yeah, Will Fox looked really impressive there. 6'2", 235. I mean, that's impressive enough, but my goodness, he, uh, you know, he sheds the, the block there, and then you can see him turn and make just a nice play on Osborne. So Will Fox... It's his first tackle of the night. Brings up third and seven here for the Tigers. Osborne in the gun once again. He'll now turn to the sideline and get further instruction. Connor Stonebreaker, the regular quarterback, lined up at the top of your screen. And Osborne keeps it himself on third and seven, looking for that right State Lake campus first down, and he's got it just shy of the midfield stripe. Had to get to the 46 and got to the 49. Yeah, you can see his elusiveness there. Um, and, and you can see the, the blocking here. It, it looks to me like it's just base blocking and kind of letting him find an opening. And you can see him cut back against the grain. I'm not real sure there was a hole called there, but like I said, just some base blocking and letting him use his feet and his athletic ability to get that first down. Might have been the final play here in the first quarter. I believe it has. Versailles going to come to the sideline as they'll continue this drive when we come back with second quarter action. Coldwater leads Versailles 6-0 here on WOSN. Our instant replays tonight are made possible by Layfeld Industrial and Welding Supplies with locations in Coldwater and Greenville. Second quarter about to get underway here between Coldwater and Versailles. I'm Garrett Seawright. Joined alongside John Zerby, bringing you all the action tonight here from HB Whole Field as Osborne hands off to Joel Garrett in the backfield, but he's cut down in the open field. It's the first time we've seen a jet sweep tonight uh, from Versailles, but, you know, they've, they've really tried to run inside the tackles, and I was kind of wondering, you know, sooner or later when they were going to try to hit the edge a little mm -hmm. bit here, and, and they ran into the short side of the field, which is, you know, typically a little bit interesting. Uh, place the run at jet sweep, but you know, uh, I guess there's probably defensively they're trying to get matchups, you know, blocking wise as, as well. Miles Putt Cutter, the tackle for Coldwater, second and 12. Osborne in the gun once again. He'll look to keep it himself and does at the midfield stripe, powers past the midfield stripe into Coldwater territory before he's cut down. Evan Holman, the 6'3, 275 pound senior, makes a stop for Coldwater. Yeah, you know, this this new, you know, I guess it's, spread isn't new, but, uh, you know, you, you see these these formations and you think, wow. But then, you know, really what's happening is you have guards pulling, you have the quarterback following the guards. I mean, that's mm -hmm. Al Hetrick, you know, T football. It's <laughs> right, not really, right. you know, anything new. It's just, you know, kind of window dress with a different formation. But that, that's what I like to see. I like to see those big guys get out there and, and, and make piles and, and guys be tough. It's like a 1982 Honda Civic with a new paint job <laughs> on it, you know? It's a, it's the same old thing. It just looks flashy as Osborne <laughs> looks to throw on third and seven. He'll go down the far sideline, left it a little short, and it's intercepted by Evan Harlemer. The Cavaliers get a big interception there. Evan Harlemer, the 6-3 senior, makes the interception. We'll get a sideline warning, I believe, on the Cavaliers, but they've got plenty of reason to be excited. The first pass play of the drive there for the Tigers is picked off. Well, and he had him. I mean, there, there was a, it was a, it was a nice call. Uh, receiver was open, like you just said, Garrett. He just underthrew him just a little bit, and uh, you know. Uh, Evan Harlemer, he's uh, he's not only a very good receiver, probably probably their number one target from you know what I've seen over the last few weeks, you know, in critical situations, but a very good defensive back as well, and has just made a big play for the Cavaliers. And of course, Evan Harlemer's father, Brian Harlemer, the longtime baseball coach for the Cavaliers, tragically passed away uh, late last September. So 
a um, uh, lot on Evan Harlemert's mind, but he's play had just a fantastic senior football season and got that interception there. He's got to feel good after that one as the Cavaliers go back to work. They'll hand off to Cody Depweg to the 31-yard line, so a gain of three there for Depweg's first carry of the night. Yeah, and, you know, we had an opportunity last week to, to talk to Coach Otten a little bit before the game, and one of the things he was, you know, saying about Evan Harlemert was, you know, throughout the entire tragedy and, and all the things the family's been through, you know, he missed a day or two of practice, and his mm -hmm. biggest thing was he wanted to get back to practice, uh, to be around, you know, the people that care about him and uh, the team that loves him. And so, uh, you know, this this community's been through a lot in the last yeah, uh, month, absolutely. and for them to kind of rally around that, it really just says a lot about their team and their community. Second and seven here for the Cavaliers as Marcel game sets up in the shotgun. Three bunched receivers to his left, and he'll run that way. game has to kind of bubble out and is gobbled up by that Versailles defense at the original line of scrimmage. So it's a loss of about three yards there as a whole host of orange shirts there to stop him. Yeah, it looked like uh, Braden Henry was the uh, the linebacker there who kind of made just really stretched things out and uh, it was able to, to, to make a great uh, play for Versailles and, and to get them to... You know, on those sweet plays, the best, there's two philosophies on that, Garrett. You can either just run them to the sideline or you can box them in. And I kind of like that spill thing where, you know, you're running out of room, so you have nowhere to go, yeah. and uh, they ran him down. So now three wide receivers to the right, Blasen Game on third and nine here for the Cavaliers. And he'll look to throw. Looking to the far sideline, right at the sticks. It's caught by Arlemer, and he'll step out of bounds. And then a 15-yard unsports or late hit is going to shove Coldwater even further into Versailles territory. Yeah, and, and like I said just a, a minute ago, Harlemert's kind of the guy. Like, you know, he's not always the deep play guy, but he's when when you need some yards, he's the guy. And um, he just has a nice, cool, composed uh, demeanor out on the field. And unfortunately, you can't give up penalties like that in this kind of game. I mean, we've had. Uh, a few penalties on Versailles already. Coach Jones is going to go into the halftime, and that's one thing he's going to tell his team is we got to commit, stop committing these penalties. So not only does Coldwater get the right State Lake campus first down, they get 15 yards tacked on after it, and now Coldwater will be set up shop at the 42-yard line of the Tigers with under nine minutes to play here in this first half on the home and insurance scoreboard. Trips wide receiver formation once again. This blossom game, play action. Hangs in the pocket, has all day to throw. Will lob one to Braylon Harlemert. He'll make the catch and step out of bounds. And now Coldwater is going to make their first appearance in the Betty's Natural Foods red zone. I think the key, and not only the key on that play, but the key on the touchdown in the first quarter is the pass protection. I mean, Blossom Game's got a lot of time. And Harlemert uh, came from the other side of the field from the slot uh, trips uh, formation, Braylon Harlemert and came all the way across the field. That takes a long time to, to get over there, so hats off to the Coldwater uh, offensive line for protecting blasting game. And you saw on the Layfeld Industrial and Welding Supplies replay, he pointed to the spot on the field. Hey, I caught that inbounds. I want you to make sure that you saw. <laughs> that was in between these lines as blasting game on first and 10 will run the counter. Slips one tackle, and he breaks another. Inside the 15-yard line is cut down by Platfoot. Just shy of the 10-yard line, but another nice run there by the senior quarterback. Well, I think one of the things that Versailles was really trying to focus on was to make tackles. And you can see here there's one, two, three, you know, almost and four broken tackles there. We see on the replay Marcel Blasengame, now the injured Cavalier on the field. He was uh, limping as he came up after that play. And Blasengame, now the injured Cavalier, We'll step aside, 6-0, Coldwater leads on WOSN. Our scoreboard tonight is provided by Holman's Insurance, your trusted local insurance specialist, member of the Wayne Insurance Group, with two locations to serve you in Chickasaw and Versailles. So after the injury there to Marcel Blasengame, and you see uh, he had to be helped off the field there. It looks like the left leg is what he's favoring there, and that'll certainly change things up for the Cavaliers as Braylon Harlemert now lines up at shotgun for Coldwater, and he'll hand off to Jack Ebbing. He gets the carry on second and three. Did not get the right State Lake campus first down, but, John, that certainly changes things for the Cavaliers here offensively. Well, I think it, it really changes everything, and you hate to see blasting game go down. You'd hope that, you know, it's not as uh, bad as it looked, you know, having to be carried off the field, but it changes the entire game plan because, you know, you, you've practiced all week with, 
and, and really most of the season with him taking the majority of snaps. And now you have uh, Harlemert coming into the game, uh, Braylon Harlemert. He's used to playing receiver, and even though he's taken some snaps in practice, he's not used to playing quarterback. Well, it just takes a bit of wind out of your sails as well, or you're putting together a pretty good drive here as Ebbing looks for the Wright State Lake campus first down. believe he has it, but, it, you know, you're, you're moving quite along pretty well there and then you see you know a guy who's thrown for 1100 yards rushed for 1100 yards he's got 29 touchdowns coming into the season uh or coming into tonight that you know, just kind of removes that win from your sales there for a little bit yeah and i think the other the part of that is just the sink of the offense you know as as uh you know there's things that you can do uh, within your scheme when you have a senior who's uh, been a starter and has been so successful and now you have a, a backup who's a starter in another position so you're really losing two starters here it's putting them in a tough spot from a Versailles perspective do you now I was going to say do you just blitz pretending that Harlemert's not going to throw the football but he does and he's got a touchdown completion to Blade Busher Blade Busher the seven yard touchdown catch from Harlemert's first pass of the night Take a great look at it on the Layfield Industrial Bunny Supplies replay. Didn't catch it cleanly, but great concentration there by Busher for the touchdown grab. Well, it shows how much I know, which is not much, because I thought, you know, let's just maybe the, run the ball and try to get it in there, but that's a lot of uh, uh, Coach Otten has a lot of belief in, uh, in, in Braylon Harlemer to come in and on his second play, throw a touchdown. What a great catch by Blade Busher. I mean, like you said, it wasn't a clean throw, but uh, it looked like it uh, touched some cloth and then bounced off of him, and then he stayed with it. And now after cold water, within the situation that they're in, they got a little bit of wiggle room. Uh, you, you know, they're not, they're have be, been up two scores, I should say. So they're going to go for two after the missed extra point. The last time out, Harlemert will keep it himself off. Left tackle is going to try to race to the pylon, and he did get in the goal past the goal line in the end zone for that two-point conversion. So that'll make it 14-0 on the Holmes Insurance scoreboard there. So nice back-to-back -back plays there by Braylon Harlow as Coldwater on top now by two scores. You can kind of see why he's in it at that backup quarterback position because he has a lot of the skill set that Marcel Blasting game does, has as well. Uh, not only can he throw the ball pretty well, but athletic. Um, I loved how he put his head down and fell forward and uh, the Fipper Seals defender thought it was no good, and Harlemert says it is good. After the touchdown, Coldwater leads 14-0 here on WOSN. Cavaliers go on an eight-play, 63-yard touchdown drive. They now lead 14-0 over the Versailles Tigers as, the, as Peyton Platfoot gets the return out to the 31-yard line before he stopped. So Versailles going to have to try to put something together here, trailing by two scores. Yeah, I think in this situation, you know, especially with the ball in seven minutes to go here in the second quarter, being down two scores, Garrett, uh, you, you just got to be patient. And I think you just got to continue to try to get something going on offense. It's not a time to panic. Um, you're not there yet. Um, so I think, you know, you stay within the game plan and try to get something going here. So Connor Stonebreaker back in the gun. They'll send Titus Garrett in motion and hand off to Joel Garrett up the middle of the field out to the 35-yard line, just shy of the 35-yard line. Gain of three there on the first down carry for Garrett. And I think they've been successful on the ground tonight. I mean, you know, yeah. if we look at, you know, their running game, every time they've, they've run the ball, especially to, to both Garretts, they've had some success. You know, not, no big plays, but they've picked up nice chunks of yardage, and I think that's just something you have to be patient with and just pick up those yards as you go. And they've they've had room to run there in that interior where and, and we've mentioned you know they've only tried to kind of bounce it outside just that one time because things have been open there in the middle of the field of Stonebreaker now on second down looks fires to Osborne he's got the Lake Campus first down just shy of the midfield strike but that'll move the chains for a Wright State Lake Campus first down and and I, I like how you know when Osborne's at a receiver not he's a good quarterback too but I like when he's out a receiver he's really elusive because when you put the ball in his hands out in the open field that's when he can really do the damage Saw it on display right there on that Layfell Industrial Water Supplies replay. So first and ten here for the Tigers trying to cross into cold water territory. This Stonebreaker lines up in the gun. One Garrett as a wing, one Garrett as a running back, and a timeout called by the Tigers here on the miscommunication with just four seconds remaining on the play clock. So 5.41 to go here in this second quarter. 14 to nothing. Coldwater leaves leads over Versailles. And 
will step aside as well. Break any action and a break on WOSN. First down, Snyder, presented by Wright State University Lake Campus. Whether you're interested in an associate's or bachelor's degree, Wright State University Lake Campus offers something for you. Visit lake.wright.edu to apply today. Stonebreaker hands off to Joel Garrett up the middle of the field. He'll push those legs out very close to a Wright State Lake Campus first down, and I believe he does move those chains. This is where they've had the most success, is just pounding the ball inside, and uh, uh, Joel Garrett has just done a really nice job of of getting the shoulders turned and finding the opening. And you can see him there, great replay uh, yeah. coverage by our cameramen as well. But um, just getting good chunks of yards for the Tigers. And it really wasn't a gigantic hole by any stretch of the imagination there on that replay where Garrett just saw that opening and squirts right through to pick up that first down. And now we'll see how Versailles continues to operate after a couple of runs that picked him up. Wright State Lake Campus first downs. Titus Garrett in motion. Stonebreaker will turn and pitch to Joel Garrett, the 40-yard line. He's into the open field, out to the 30-yard line. Another Wright State Lake Campus first down there, and a potential touchdown-saving tackle made by Blade Busher of Coldwater. And Coldwater is really mixing up their coverage. You see a lot of shifting on the back end, but uh, Versailles sticking with this ground game. I love the blocking, especially up front from Jared Lyons, a six-foot, 216-pound senior, just getting after it and allowing Garrett to get a really nice game. Lions has had a nice first half here for the, the Tigers, a couple of big tackles, and then you see him paving the way there. When you can get that sustained block and keep shoving downfield, that's uh, things are going well for the Tigers in the ground game as now Joel Garrett lines up in the slot to the bottom of your screen as Titus Garrett, the running back, and he'll get the handoff and patiently waits out to the 20-yard line as they get very close to the Betty's Natural Foods red zone. Well, and Coldwater is in a situation now where they're actually in a three-man front, so they're they're trying to be a little bit conservative when it comes to giving up a big play, but it's allowing Versailles to run the ball, and you see their line starting to get going and starting to really get a push. Lucas Stam in there, the guard, 5'10", 185 senior. Not a very big guy, but really getting after it on the, on the offensive line. So that'll bring up second and three with four minutes to go here in this first half. Stonebreaker in the gun once again. Titus Garrett joins him in the backfield. Two receivers split out wide to each side, and second and three. Stonebreaker, the play action pass. Throws to Osborne at the five, and Michael Osborne has a Allen Davis insurance touchdown. And Versailles answers. I mean, what a big play for this team. A Stonebreaker's pass. They've ran that same play with Osborne, a deep slant route. And like I said, he is elusive across the middle of the field when you can give him some space uh, and allowing him to get in the open field, uh, breaks a tackle and makes a huge play for Versailles. Get a great look at it there on the Lathal Industrial Athletic Supplies replay. Stonebreaker, plenty of time, great pass protection. And then Osborne just beats his man, slips a tackle, and he's in from 21 yards out. And now Joel Garrett on to kick the extra point. Snap is back, the hold is down, the kick is up, and through the uprights and good. Making it 14 to seven on the Holman's insurance scoreboard. So we'll step aside, 3.45 to go here in this second quarter. Cavaliers with a seven point advantage in this MAC contest on WOSN. Touchdown Snyder presented by Allen Davis Insurance, your solutions provider, specializing in auto, home, business insurance. And a couple of Allen Davis insurance touchdowns here in this first half. Coldwater on top of her sales, 14 to seven. I'm Garrett C. Wright, joined alongside John Zerby, bringing you all the action tonight here from HB Hole Field. And an easy pitch and catch there for the Tigers gets them on the scoreboard, John. Yeah, I mean, that's just, that's a thing of beauty. And I think it was set up by all of those runs with the Garretts, uh, uh, you know, one after the other. And then finally, uh, you've seen Stonebreaker make a great pass to Michael Osborne across the middle to get him going. Kick from kick off from Leland Bolin. And a big hit made by Joel Garrett in the open field after the Cavalier hopped on the football. As Miles Potcutter scooped up, I believe, the, oh, no, that was uh, Blade Busher tried to reverse field and Joel Garrett just said you're not going anywhere sits him down at the 25 yard line Cavaliers have 75 yards to go here with 340 to go in this first half Joel Garrett's made a lot of plays he's not only played offensively special teams I think I seen him serving popcorn before the game Garrett I mean he's been everywhere doing a great job so the Cavaliers come back out with Braylon Harlemer by his lonesome in the shotgun on first and ten 
Now send a man in motion. A.J. Harlemer will get the sweep, and he's gobbled up. A big play made there. Yeah, I think it's Braden Henry from that outside linebacker position again, just coming up and making a fantastic play. You see him come out uh, right here. He's a, he's, he's a contained man, and he's keeping him on his inside, inside shoulder, and just a fantastic play. Yeah, turns it back up and in and then makes the tackle, so a nice play there by Braden Henry. Makes it second and 13 for Coldwater, and I'm sure kind of at this point they're content to watch some of that time click off the Holman's Insurance scoreboard. Well, and I think if you're Coldwater, you're you're just trying to, to get familiar with the new quarterback. You're going to run some plays that he's familiar with, and you're going to try to just, uh, you know, uh, get familiar with him, and you can see there's already a little bit of confusion down there. Well, he changed the cadence up a little bit with a different quarterback, and you get a false start penalty, and that'll make it second and about 18 now for the Cavaliers. And I think the thing, the, the, it's always a, a telltale sign is that you just – that kind of stuff right there, a false start or a confusion on an, a, mm -hmm. a formation or, like you said, the cadence, and that just is a result for him not taking – he doesn't have the practice reps, and it's not his fault. It's not Coach Otten's fault. It's just it's the nature of the beast. You know, your, your first-string quarterback is going to get the majority of the reps. Now is the, the time that he's probably played the most quarterback as he's played in, in a long time. Harlemer back to pass, pressured and dropped inside the five-yard line. A whole host of Tigers bust through the line and make the sack and it's going to be third and even longer now for the Cavaliers. Well, and I, I really like the play call um, by Coach uh, uh, by Coach Jones there, Coach Daryl Jones, believe it or not, Coach uh, Ryan Jones' father, who's the defensive coordinator. But he had a little uh, he had a little uh, blitz coming on, and Connor Stonebreaker, quarterback. You always love to see a quarterback get a sack. Yeah. I mean, isn't that nice? Comes you know? off the edge, unblocked. Number 30 is gets to Harlemert first, so a timeout now called by the Tigers to, to stop the clock. One, the ball's at the seven-yard line. Two, it's going to be third. and uh, they got to get to I don't, Newport from here. I don't, I don't, <laughs> they got they got a ways to go here on State Route 47 uh, to get the first down. But uh, that's a couple of big plays there. As we take a look at the Midwest Athletic Conference standings where for sales, you know, they're in fourth place in the MAC and the seventh-ranked team in their division. Yeah, I mean, you look at this. This is incredible. And like we said in the pregame show, it's harder to win the MAC than it is to win a state title, no doubt. And you can see these two teams at the top. They have been the class of every division in Ohio football. But for sales, I mean, you know, ranked seventh, they have a very good chance of, of getting – they'll make the playoffs, but have a very good chance of making a long run. So it'll be third and 27 here for Coldwater with Braylon Harlemert as the quarterback. Joined in the backfield by Jack Evan. And you mentioned Newport. I drove through Egypt, Ohio, to get here. <laughs> that, was the first, that was the first for me. First trip through Egypt? Yes, it was. It was a short trip. Harlemert, the screen for the outside on third and 27. They get the ball out to about the 17 yard line. As Evan Harlemert. Gets the reception, but he's well short of moving the chains. Right the yeah, that's a that's a that's a really good play call. It's it's a little conservative, but I think right now you've got to get uh, uh, Evan Harlemer, or excuse me, Braylon Harlemer, some confidence, mm -hmm. uh, and just and just letting him feel comfortable within the position. And you know, as we kind of look across the field, uh, Garrett, you see Marcel blasting game on crutches. That that's not a good sign. So it looks like this might be the the the, the lineup for the rest of this game. Well, and really, you know, that's the second pass attempted by Braylon Harlemer. He's completed both of them. Um, just, the, you know, the, the second time they went to throw the ball, the Versailles had came on a blitz and it didn't have a whole lot of time to set up shop and throw, but he has completed both of his passes here. And, and you know, both of them were kind of high percentage. One of them is a screen. One of them is just a quick slant that he throws for a touchdown. But um, and, and really getting a backup quarterback kind of changes things for, for everybody. For the guy calling plays, you know, on second and 18, you might think, all right, this is a this is a play that we can run with Marcel, but you just can't run with your backup quarterback. Now you just stated it perfectly. It, it does change everything. And the other thing it changes is the defensive coordinator's calls. I mean, Versailles is just literally sending everybody now on passing downs. And that's why you got to see those quick passes passes that just get high percentage completions. Justin Kalpa high arching punt goes off the dome of a Coldwater Cavalier on the fair catch as Platfoot trying to grab it. So it hit number 11 for Coldwater on top of the head as Ethan Elander there 
on the coverage, and it was good coverage. He just, I don't know that he ever saw that the fair catch signal was made by Platfoot and really maybe how close he was. Right, and they're going to call a penalty on that, and unfortunately it's that was unintentional. I think he was just trying to play defense and, and got there a little sooner than what he thought, and they're, they're going to give uh, Versailles really good field position here. Yeah, so you get from the spot of the foul there, which was just inside the midfield stripe. So with 2.24 to go here in this second quarter, Versailles is going to have great starting field position at the 34-yard line. And I don't think you have to be in a rush. Uh, you, you've got 2 minutes and 24 seconds. Now you've used your timeouts. So that is one thing that uh, you don't have. But I think that you can you can get some high percentage plays here and you can you can basically call two plays in one and try to get a first down here. Tigers without a timeout with 2.24 to go here in this first half. Stonebreaker in the gun will keep it himself and he's gobbled up. Tries to break through the tackle of Depweg and Will Fox but he's pushed backwards. A nice play there by the Coldwater D. Yeah, Cody Depweg just did a really nice job at the defensive end spot of uh, fighting off that block, and uh, then you know, obviously Evan Homan's there to, to help him and uh, really stuff that play. And um, you know, Versailles now is going to have to get up and go a little bit. So second and eleven here for the Tigers. Both Garretts in the backfield. Stonebreaker will sling it to Joel Garrett out the back. He makes one man missed out to the. 30-yard line, just shy of the 25-yard line, very close to a Wright State Lake campus first down. It's going to be third and about half a yard, though, after the 10-yard completion there to Garrett. And the, the problem with that is a good play, but it didn't stop the clock, you know, and they didn't get the first down, so they're going to have to get the clock stopped here. High formation, first time under center for Stonebreaker. They hand off to Titus Garrett up the gut, and he gets the Wright State Lake campus first down. Yeah, I formation. Haven't seen that yet. Short yardage uh, package. And, um, you know, Versailles is going to be, you can see him, the coaches are getting a move and trying to get them lined up because the clock is moving now. A 120 to go on the Holman's Insurance scoreboard. As Stonebreaker remains in the gun with three wide receivers to his left as they approach the Betty's Natural Foods red zone. He'll fire looking for Platfoot a little high. And it's incomplete, but that does stop the clock. Yeah, and that's not a that's not a bad thing. I think that uh, uh, he had Michael Osborne actually run a kind of a wheel route from that slot position, and then he had Platfoot kind of running the inside route, and you know, kind of put it in between both of them. But that's okay because now they can stop, they can get their composure, the coaches can make the play call that they want, maybe get the the matchup that they want too. So second and ten here for the Tigers, looking to put another touchdown on the board and trying to tie up this football game between the 8-0 Cavaliers and the 6-2 Tigers. Three wide receivers to the left of Stonebreaker once again. He'll drop back to pass, has plenty of time to throw over the middle of the field, looking for Osborne, and he's got it. A touchdown for Michael Osborne from 23 yards out. Has Versailles one point shy of the Cavaliers after the Allen Davis insurance touchdown. Yeah, he got man-to-man -man coverage, one-on-one -on -one coverage, and and that that is tough uh, to to handle that. And he just ran a, a, a seam route. You know, wasn't quite on the seam. He's quite inside the seam, but. Stonebreaker, you got to give him credit for just throwing a beautiful ball in the back of the end zone. And, you know, one of the keys of the game was know where Michael Osborne is at. They knew where he was at. They just couldn't defend him. Great job by Michael Osborne to get that foot down as well to not make it, uh, you know, up to the official of whether he, you know, got a uh, foot down or not. He did get a foot down, and then a Coldwater Cavalier jumps off sides there on the extra point attempt. So that gives you a little bit of decision something a decision to make you know it's almost like as a coach you don't even want that to happen because now you do have to make a decision because in a game like this every point is going to count and so you know on the one and a half yard line do you go for it and try to get that two or do you not take the chance and just stick with the special teams and take the one but um i don't know it looked like we have a uh, versailles coming off the field here kind of running trying to uh maybe okay he declined it so so they'll keep Joel Garrett on to kick the extra point. I'm not going to tell you how Joel Garrett has done on extra points at risk of the announcer's jinx. <laughs> He's good at everything. Let's He's, just put it that way. He has had a fantastic first half here. Because the snap is back to hold us down. The kick is up. And the kick is good. It wasn't pretty, but it went through the uprights. And we're tied at 14 on the Holman's Insurance scoreboard here between number one Coldwater and number seven for sales on WOSN.
Red Zone tonight brought to you by Betty's Natural Foods. They're your partner for better health. Visit Betty'sNaturalFoods.com to learn more. The Versailles Tigers with two touchdowns just outside the Betty's Natural Food red zone, a 23-yard and a 21-yard touchdown as Coldwater has to just pounce on the football after Blade Busher has a little trouble with that bouncing football and will just fall on it there for the Cavaliers. Yeah, and Versailles is doing a nice job of keeping the ball away from the playmakers. And sometimes, you know this, Garrett, when you, when you have those squib kicks that are bouncing all over the place, you can't get your – your, your kick return formation set up, you can't get your scheme block, uh, set up as well. So it's just tough to return, and you just want to just recover the ball in that situation. Yeah, it's, it's one of those, like, you, you just got to kind of live to find another day there. You, it's natural to, like, okay, I've got to scoop this football up. I've got to, yep. I've got to run. And instead, just, all right, calm down. Let's just pounce on it. and, and <laughs> Just make recover sure, it. Right, make sure we've got the football. So Braylon Harlemert will go back to work for the Cavaliers looking to throw. And he's now three for three in his passes as he throws to Evan Harlemert at the 35-yard line. But he's gobbled up in the open field by Ethan Wilker of Versailles. And we've seen Harlemert can throw the ball. I mean, he's he's got athletic bill. He can throw the ball. He's got receivers. So it'll be kind of an interesting thing to see how he progresses as the game goes. Cavaliers move quickly. They'll chuck it to Curtis Dewar along this near sideline. He'll step out of bounds. It's enough for a right State Lake campus first down, however. And Harlemert continues to be perfect throwing the football. Yeah, and that's got to be a confidence boost for Coldwater because, you know, as they go into halftime, they're going to have to kind of discuss what their game plan is going to be going forward, how they're going to adjust the blasting game being out of the game, um, and, and what's going to be most comfortable for Harlemert through, uh, for the rest of this game. And Coldwater does get the football to begin the second half as Harlemert lines up in a shotgun. The Jack Ebbing to his right. Drops back to pass and now will keep it himself. Scampers at the 45-yard line, tries to slip a tackle, can't as Curtis Stover makes the stop, or excuse me, Ethan Stover makes the stop for Coldwater, or for Versailles, and a timeout called by the Cavaliers. And I think that's one of the things you have to be careful of when you're blitzing, is when you have a quarterback that can run, you're going to start to see a lot of these quarterback draws, and, and basically it's going to negate your blitzes. So it's going to, you know, by them doing that a few times, it's going to really cool uh, Versailles off of, uh, from them just peeling back and sending everybody. So a timeout called by Coldwater. 30 seconds remain. Just take a look at the Associated Press poll where, you know, what is that, one, two, three, four, five. Max schools there <laughs> uh, in the Associated Press uh, state poll there where uh, several of those schools, uh, Van Wert obviously also, uh, we're going to be well represented in the playoffs and hopefully well represented uh, at the state championships as well as we, we traditionally are. Well, I think that's that's been the fun thing about, you know, living in this area and following all these teams is that, you know, there's always a wide range of different teams that are, are going to make the, the playoffs. And, you know, we, we've always been very well represented in West Central Ohio. But the thing is, is that, you know, you root for these other teams and you want them to do well. And it's easy to root for the MAC because they do things right. And, you know, even this game tonight, what, what two well-coached teams and two great communities just uh, battling it out. Tied at 14 with 33 seconds to go. Raylan Harlemert turns, fires, complete to A.J. Harlemert. And he'll be right at the midfield stripe into Versailles territory after the completed pass. Yeah, and he, and he caught a break there. Uh, the official went ahead and uh, called him out of bounds, and so the clock will stop. And I think the Versailles coach is on the sideline there, kind of <laughs> wanted that to be in bounds. Yeah, we can see from our vantage point where it's not an animated discussion by any stretch of the imagination, but more of a, like, hey, Come on now. Yeah, help come me, help on. me out here. And, you know, coaches, they, they, they tend to not agree with officials, Garrett. It's you crazy. didn't know that by it's now. It's so. how that works, isn't it? 32 here for the Cavaliers. A bunch formation to the top of your screen. Looking for a late, right state late campus first down. Harlemer, the quarterback keeper, follows his blockers, gets that first down, and Moore steps out of bounds just past the 40-yard lines. He'll be at the 39, so a gain of 10 there for Harlemert on the scam. Well, and the key block here was from Evan Harlemert, number one. You can see him here on the edge. He's got a good block, and then he gets his shoulders turned and makes a nice play, just allowing enough room for Braylon Harlemert to get out of bounds and get up there. And, you know, I don't know what, what a field goal position is. And, you know, in high school, you never really know. But it's closer, the better. Um, but, you know, they've got 21 seconds here with some timeouts, and they can still get some yardage. And Justin Calpit from 43 earlier in the season. So Cavaliers trying to get into field goal range as Harlemert back to pass. Harlemert dropped. Not going to be able to get a field goal from that 
vantage point as Versailles gets a big sack from Lucas Batty. Yeah, this is just this is just a fantastic play. I mean, you see him come in and, and really, uh, you know, Ethan Stover kind of started it uh, by, by making a fantastic uh, move inside and then uh, Batty made a nice uh, move on the inside as well. You see Harmler back of the head there bounces off the turf. And well, this is this is just kind of a indicative of what this game is. It's physical. Absolutely. Both both these teams are, are taking shots at each other, and you know, uh, unfortunately, you know, we keep one of the key players of the game has went down. But I think this is what you're going to see throughout the game is just physical football. If you're just joining us, the Cavaliers playing without Marcel Blazing game. They're do everything quarterback. Uh, looked like he left in the early stages here in the second quarter with a left leg injury that he's on the Cavalier sideline and uh, utilizing crutches, which you know, never want to see, but Blasen game 1,100 yards through the air, 1,100 yards on the ground. And we're tied at 14 here with 14 seconds remaining here in this first half. And John, it, it certainly changes what Coldwater was trying to accomplish. You know, when the ball was spotted at the the 39-yard line over sales, you know, you're looking up, okay, can we, can we get in get the field goal range where now you're back at, you know, the 49-yard line of your own 49-yard yeah, line? Yeah, and I just think at this point you're going to try to make a, a Hail Mary or just even get into halftime and try to maybe reset and see what you can do from here. Now Harlemert s slips forward to about the 48-yard line. The clock continues to tick, and Coldwater's just going to step out here of this first half. So Coldwater put the first two Allen Davis insurance touchdowns on the board. Versailles comes back with two of their own. And we're tied at 14 as we head to the halftime break here on WOSN. Our instant replays tonight are made possible by Layfeld Industrial and Welding Supplies with locations in Coldwater and in Greenville. And you get a look at the instant replay from today's Bradford Pumpkin Show just down the road here from Versailles. And it looks a little breezy this afternoon for the parade, but you see there the, uh, the youngsters enjoying the Bradford Pumpkin Show where you know, everybody else gets their you know, festival, their town festival out when it's <laughs> 95 <laughs> degrees outside. But Bradford going with the 55 degree day here in uh, October. But it goes on all, all week long, basically, John. Well, and you can see the town is completely out and supporting this and the parade. And I don't know, maybe this is during the school day. Who knows? I'd take a day off of school. So, uh uh, the kids are enjoying it, and, uh, you know, obviously, you know, in the fall is a fun time of year. You know, the, the weather's cooled off, but especially the pumpkin show, pumpkin festivals, just anything fall I'm all about, especially cooler weather gear. Well, and if, if a teacher says, hey, uh, we're not going we're, we're to have class today, you don't ask, are we going to the no. pumpkin show? It's what, okay, well, I'll do whatever you, you tell me to as long as I don't have to sit here and learn the Pythagorean theorem. We're going <laughs> to go to the pumpkin show, and uh, you got the kids out during the day. It's a fun little atmosphere there uh, in Bradford just down the road here from Versailles, where the Tigers are tied with the Coldwater Cavaliers at 14. Coldwater put two touchdowns on the board first, and then Versailles able to tie it back up with a pair of Michael Osborne touchdown catches from Connor Stonebreaker. And the Cavaliers will receive the football here to begin the second half. And after they had a little bit of time to regroup after Marcel Blasen game's injury, what did uh, Coldwater head coach Chip Otten say to his squad there at the halftime break? And how do they regroup here for the second half? I think they just have to reset. And I think they have to say that, hey, listen, you know, we have guys in certain positions for this reason. Um, here's our game plan. Here's what we're going to do. And I think that, you know, the biggest thing, the best thing that happened in Coldwater was halftime, just to hear from their coaches, to, to kind of get reorganized and maybe even get some, some, um, uh, some packages put together that they, you know, maybe have put together in practice and, and just kind of getting that uh, regrouped. So I, I think that the biggest thing that they can take from this is that, uh, you know, they, they kind of have a restart. It's 0-0 essentially. And so uh, we're going to really see how this plays out. So the Cavaliers will get the football to begin this second half as Versailles will tee it up. They'll get set to send it away as Leland Boland will do the honors for the Tigers. Officially get the whistle ready for play. Tied at 14 in quarter number three and a low line drive and kick will go to the Cavaliers. Blade Busher scoops it up. He'll return to the far side of the field. Now stop in the middle and brought down at the 27-yard line by Peyton Platfoot. Will Water will begin their first drive of the second half there. Yeah, I was starting to think maybe at the end of the first half that was just 
Uh, that, that squib kick was maybe just, you know, something that they were, they were trying to do at the end of the half. But I'm kind of starting to think that this is a strategy because uh, they did it again. And, you know, I, I know last week Coldwater had some really good returns on their kickoff return. So I think that's a strategy that Versailles is implementing tonight. So Braylon Harlemer will direct the offense here for the Cavaliers with two wide receivers split out wide to each side. They'll now send Curtis Dewar in motion and turn and fire on the hitch and pitch right away. Got it into the hands of Jack Ebbing, and I he just dropped the football. I don't know if he forgot that he was going to get the hitch and pitch. The <laughs> completion to Evan Harlemert happened. You'll see the Layfeld Industrial and Welding Supplies replay. Watch the back out of the backfield. He gets it right to him and just drops the football. Well, the nice thing is, is that uh, it was a pitch, so you know he got about a three-yard gain on that fumble. Uh, but uh, that was, I think, those those what we just talked about was putting in some of these special plays or these little packages that they have trying to get something that maybe Versailles has not seen on film. Harlemert will hand off to Ebbing this time. Reverses field. Gets up to just shy of the 35-yard line, so gain of one, and that will bring up third and short here for the Cavaliers. Yeah, and I think, you know, the Cavaliers, they're they're trying to get establish this running game. They're trying to establish early early in the game, and uh, with Blasting game really taking those uh, quarterback runs, but I think, you know, they kind of found an opening with some of the deep passes. I, I'm not sure you're going to see those deep, those deep, that deep ball threat anymore, so they're going to have to really establish a strong running game inside. Cavaliers getting set up correctly. So they'll send three wide receivers out wide. Depwing and a wing to the near side. They'll turn and fire too high for Curtis Dewar. And that's the first incompletion thrown by Harlem. Yeah, that's kind of a dangerous uh, uh, play, too, because uh, uh, the receiver, I, I, I don't know if he was, you know, uh, Behind the line of scrimmage, I mean, he was behind the line of scrimmage, but even behind the quarterback, it looked like it was a you know a parallel pass. So, you know, that could have ended up looking. I mean, that looked to me yeah, like it could have been a fumble. fumble. That's a fumble. Yeah. So, you know, uh, it's just one of those things that they're just trying to get completions and get short uh, short completions, but it's kind of scary at the same time. And maybe luckily for Coldwater, it still looks like it's fourth fourth and three rather than about fourth and eight as Justin Kalp comes on to do the punting honors. Chest high snap. Don't send it away. Flatfoot will fair catch it at the 33-yard line. So for Sales, relatively good starting field position for their first drive of the half. Well, and for Sales, uh, that's just a big defensive stop. I mean, really to come out and get that stop. I think confidence is going to be a, a huge part of this second half. And I think confidence uh, for Versailles knowing that Blasting Game is not playing and, and that their defense can get some stops. You know, and, and maybe Coldwater not having as much confidence in what they have on the field right now, it could be key. Cavaliers late getting set up here as they'll finally come out and cover. A wide receiver as Joel Garrett will go up the middle of the field, and Garrett is off to the races. Joel Garrett has one man to beat at the 20. Can he get to the pylon? He can. A 66-yard touchdown run by Joel Garrett gives Versailles their first lead of the night after the Allen Davis insurance touchdown. Well, I think that confidence speaks for itself right there. I mean, they made a huge hole for Garrett to run through, and I love the, the footage here, the replay. You can see him just kind of breaking away and, and the sideline going nuts and, and really heading towards the end of the end zone and just getting in there. It's a great look on the Layfeld Industrial Wellness Supplies replay. You can see Garrett looking over his shoulder, checking just to make sure. Yep, this is I'm still I'm still <laughs> chugging. But a 66-yard touchdown run there by Joel Garrett, the 5'10 junior, is sixth of the season, and now he's on to kick the extra point for the Tigers. Looks like they got to take a break just so he can get his breath to kick this extra point. At the 10:45 mark here in the third quarter, kick is up. And the kick is good for sales with a 21-14 lead over Coldwater on the Holman's Insurance scoreboard here on WOSN. Our scoreboard tonight provided by Holman's Insurance, your trusted local insurance specialist, member of the Wayne Insurance Group with two locations to serve you in Chickasaw and for sales. Look there at the Bradford Pumpkin Show. I don't know that I, oh, th that would be more my style, maybe the old <laughs> crazy caterpillars rather than the uh, swinging and <laughs> Kickoff goes to the 25-yard line. Just powers ahead as the Cavalier. At number 83, I believe. Nope, he's, he's not an 83 on the roster, so if it was. Oh, it is. Oh, 33. 33, Kenny Bailey. 
on a recovery and a return there for the Cavaliers. And they'll try to get something together here, John, after they go three and out to begin this uh, second half and then give up the one play touchdown drive. All the momentum currently rests with the Tigers. Yeah, and unfortunately, you can see Marcel blasting game here. He's in street clothes, uh, doesn't look like he'll return. And so uh, at this point on, you're going to go with Braylon Harlemert. You're going to have to ride this train and kind of see where it goes. Harlemert points out the blitzing linebacker and will hand off to Ebbing. Jack Ebbing gets very close to a late campus first down. Gain of eight and a half there on first down for the junior. Yeah, I think at this point you, you, you want to have a healthy dose of Jack Ebbing uh, carrying the ball. Uh, getting yards and just uh, you know he's he's uh, your senior junior running back here that's really been a reliable uh, back in the backfield and also you know thinking trying to get Braylon Harlemer involved in the running game a little bit um, the strategy is going to have to change a little bit now that uh, that they're down a touchdown uh, and from Coldwater's perspective you don't want it to but how much simpler how much simpler does the playbook get when you have to bring in a, a backup quarterback I think this the playbook gets slashed I think you're running just your base stuff and allowing him to be successful, which you see that it's happening now with these, these inside runs. Braylon Harlow picks up the Wright State Lake campus first down there on the quarterback keeper. Get a great look at the Layfeld Industrial and Welding Supplies replay, slips a tackle, and then gets out past the 50-yard line into Versailles territory. That's a nice carry there by the junior. Yeah, and I think you, you got to look at what his skill set is. And, and what I see, you know, in a short time is just he's athletic, he can move, he's elusive, he's fast. You know, getting these quarterback runs, getting these runs, the jack ebbing, letting him get out there, and also maybe pa play action passes, getting him on the corner, allowing him to get some space uh, to make those plays. So a trio of folks in the backfield. Yes, they'll hand off to Ebbing. Ebbing off tackle. Big hit there in the open field by Henry for Versailles. Cuts him down. And Ebbing gets a gain of about a yard there on first down. But that's a good formation. That's the first time we've seen two backs in the backfield um, uh, giving Harlemer just a little bit of, uh, 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 I guess, coverage back there. And, and I like that idea of maybe trying to spread the ball around even more. That they're pretty reliable on blasting game, and that's going to have to go out the window, and they're going to have to spread the ball around a lot more. So Braylon Harlemer in the shotgun once again with a wing lined up to his right with Ebbing. Harlemer will turn and fire to Evan Harlemer. It's caught, but he is immediately Harlemer cut down by Groff, and it'll be third and relatively short here for Coldwater. And they're in good field position. I mean, they've got to get five to six yards here. And you're past the 50. Typically, coaches will, will think about going four downs when you're in this uh, territory. But this is a staple play, uh, getting the ball out to uh, Evan Harlemer on a, on a short hitch route. And uh, Braylon Harlem are putting it right there. I mean, he's, he's doing a really nice job of laying those short passes right where they need to be. So on third and five here for the Cavaliers, do you do you think about running the football here and we'll know what they're going to do if they, if they do run the football, that they that going for it on fourth down is an option? Or do you put the ball in the air here and still consider going for it on fourth down? Well, I was going to say run the ball, but I was already wrong. But you can see here, they just made a big play. And he gets it to Blade Busher, and Busher's in the end zone for the 43-yard Allen Davis insurance touchdown. He just slipped right past his defender up the seam. You'll take a look at the top of your screen, and he just runs right past the defender. Harlemert floats it up there. Busher does the rest, a 43-yard touchdown strike, and Coldwater answers. Yeah, what a fantastic ball by Braylon Harlemer. He just he puts it out there and lays it in there perfectly, and you see what a good route ran by Blade Busher, getting past his uh, defender and getting open, and boy, that is a shot in the arm for the Cavaliers, and you know, it's just one of those things that, that I'm sure there were some questions on that sideline as to what they're going to do next, and I love what Chip Otten did. He says, you know what, we're going to throw the ball, we're going to go deep, we're going to stay with who we are. The second time those two have connected, but the kick goes into the offensive line, blocked, and Versailles retains the one-point advantage at 21-20. We'll step aside, Tigers with the lead here in the third quarter on WOSN. Touchdown tonight presented by Allen Davis Insurance, your solutions provider specializing in auto, home, business insurance, and more as we've traded Allen Davis Insurance touchdowns here in this second half. Tigers with a 21-20 lead over Coldwater after missed extra point. However, as Justin Kalp has a football team up, ready to kick it away for Coldwater. It's a high end over end kick, going to be caught by Platfoot at the 10 yard line. Versailles had a couple of nice returns here tonight. Gets that one out to about the 35 yard line before Platfoot is hit to the turf. 
in their sales. Again, has, they, they've started a couple of different times right out the, the, that 35-yard line or so, John. Yeah, Coldwater's done a really good job of kick recover, of coverage, but um, lately. But these are nice returns. I mean, they're you know they're starting at the 35, uh, getting a really good uh, a blocking up front, and then you know Peyton Platfoot's done a really good job of returning the football. And it'll be interesting to see kind of what the uh, the you know the the comeback will be here for Versailles offensively. I did not expect Coldwater to do that, to throw the ball down yeah. the field like they did, and I don't think Versailles did either. And so I'd like to see how Versailles responds here, responds offensively. Tigers, of course, went one play 66 yards the last time as Joel Garrett gets his second handoff of the second half out to the 39-yard line, a gain of five for the junior. But uh, is there maybe some idea that you you take a little bit of time here just to give your defense maybe just a some semblance of a rest after you know the the Tigers D has been on the field for quite a while here in the second half yeah, yeah I was just thinking I was thinking you know a long drive would be the best thing for Versailles here and 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 mainly because you, you Coldwater's just got a little shot in the arm offensively they're starting to feel good about themselves so the best thing you can do is keep their offense off the field and Versailles offense is built uh, for that ground attack to just get yards and get first downs. Connor Stonebreaker in the gun will hand off to Joel Garrett once again, and he's gobbled up in the backfield. Evan Holman with the stop for the Cavaliers. The Tiger faithful want a face mask. We'll see if we can't get a look at this Layfeld Industrial Welding Supplies replay. Well, I love how... Oh, that, ooh, ooh, my goodness. I, I think he grabbed every <laughs> part of that face mask, and he got away with one there for sure, and I don't blame the Tiger faithful. But I will say Evan Holman... Uh, before the face mask, just did a really nice job of taking the kick out block and uh, just kind of squeezing down and uh, just making a, I hate to say it, but a violent kind of play yeah. there. No, and generally that's the one play where you know, the, the person doesn't get up and feel like they have to appeal to the official for the flag that, you know, everybody in the stadium saw that, but uh, Garrett was a bit bewildered that he didn't get the flag there. Now he gets the pass out of the backfield this time, and the Cavaliers cut him down for a one-yard gain on third and five, and it's going to be fourth and decision time here for the Tigers. Looks like they'll send a punt unit out. Well, and I think Coldwater, when, whenever you, you know, historically, whenever you, you hear so much about their offense and how explosive their offense is, but whenever their back's against the wall, I feel like it's always been their defense just steps up, and you see the pursuit here what a great play by the uh, the corner uh, the corner Braylon Harlemer playing uh, not only a corner but playing quarterback doing a lot of different things tonight came up and helped himself offensively and made a nice play on the corner so AJ Griesdorn will come on to punt Cavaliers will send a rush nearly blocked but Griesdorn got it away and he got a good one away as AJ Harlemer has to go get it he fumbles the football but pounces on it just inside the 25-yard line, but a fantastic punt there by Griesdorn under pressure. I swear somebody got a hand on it, but as far as that punt went, I, I don't think it possibly could have, but that was just a fantastic uh, special teams play, something uh, Versailles needed to, to really pin uh, Coldwater deep. And, and, you know, the momentum has shifted, Garrett. You yep. know, I, I'll tell you, within that first minute of the, the second quarter, I thought, boy, Coldwater is in trouble, but they have responded and really gotten back into this game, and it's going to be interesting to see how they respond offensively. And Chip Hotton told us one of the keys to the game was they had to be efficient, and I think even with Braylon Harleman as their quarterback, the Cavaliers have been efficient offensively. Yeah, they have. A lot of guys touching the ball and not a lot of uh, plays that they've lost yardage. Jack Ebbing gets the carry, and he's driven backwards at the 20-yard line. It's a gain of seven. They're on first down for the junior running back. But speaking of efficiency, a seven-yard gain on a carry on first down, uh, that's kind of textbook answer there. Yeah, and I like the formation. Again, we went from primarily trips formation to empty formations. Now we're going to two back. And you talk about playing efficiently, spreading the wealth. Now you got three choices in the backfield. And like you said earlier, yeah, they're, they're in the spread, but you're going to give it to three or four different guys. It's really fun to watch this. Bunch formation for the Cavaliers. They've ran the quarterback out of this formation a couple of different times, and they'll do that once again. But another big play made in the backfield by Jared Lyons of Versailles. Oh, Jared Lyons, he's just a beast. I mean, I love I love his energy, too. He's just he's your typical defensive lineman. He's got bandages and the stuff. You know, he's probably, he's probably torn all kinds of stuff, and he's still out there. But watch him, comes across the line and just comes down, beautiful. He's got helmet f paint flaked off there. He's, <laughs> that's an old school football player wearing number 79 there and he makes a big play on second down to bring up third and five here for the Cavaliers. 
at their own 19-yard line as Braylon Harlemert, the junior wide receiver playing quarterback for the injured Marcel Blasen game, lines up in the shotgun with Ebbing to his left. Three wide receivers to his right and is pressured and dropped. Another play by Jared Lyons. He gets his third sack of the season, and that will bring up fourth and long for the Cavaliers. Well, Jared Lyons has just been everywhere. I mean, and, and you would think at some point, you know, he's double teamed, right. and he just spins out of it and just makes a huge play. At some point, they're going to have to scheme it up to where we've got to block Jared Lyons. And you like to think that, okay, we're gonna, you two block that kid, and we're covered. He splits the double team, gets the sack. Connor Stonebreaker, a little bit of pressure there as well for the Tigers, but Jared Lyons gets the credit for the sack, and it's fourth and nine now for the Cavaliers as Kalp stands on his own goal line. Tigers will put on a return. High spiraling kick going to be caught at the 46-yard line. Michael Osborne makes the catch. A great starting field position there for the Tigers. It's Versailles, you know, one of these old school cities that still has the old CSX train rumbling through that you can see from HB <laughs> whole field here. Well, I think that just adds to the environment. I mean, like you said, this is a historic field as we as I pulled up tonight. I haven't been here in a while. Noticed all the upgrades, but you know, the field sits low. There's no track. You feel like you're on top of the field. You have the, the train rolling by. You have the fans having a bonfire right outside. You know, gosh, this is just great Northwest Ohio football. That it is. The Tigers with a 21-20 advantage over Coldwater, and they get the football back. Osborne in the shotgun will keep it himself. And he's into the open field. Michael Osborne spins out of a tackle at the 35-yard line. Osborne cut down by Harlemert, but a touchdown-saving tackle there by A.J. Harlemert. Michael Osborne, you see him with the football in his hands. He can be dangerous. Oh, he's dangerous. And I know, uh, you know, one of the keys for Coldwater was know where Michael Osborne is. Well, they know where he is. They just can't stop him. Look at the spin move and, and breaking out and getting that burst of energy there. Great camera work by our, our fine uh, uh, camera guys here at WOSN as well. So the ball very close to the Benny's Natural Foods red zone. Versailles has played well in this area. They've got a 21-yard touchdown strike to Osborne, a 23-yard touchdown strike to Osborne, and now Osborne lines up in the backfield. They'll hand off to Joel Garrett, and Joel Garrett swallowed up by that cold water D. I, I don't know, Garrett. I, you know, I've called quite a few games this year, but I don't, I don't know if I've had this many where it's just like I feel like, this, oh, this team's got the momentum, and then like 10 seconds later, <laughs> no, the other team, like it is just back and forth. And uh, this is why the Mac, uh, the Mac is just so fun to be a part of because these schools, you know, you, you know, there's just punches being thrown. And I'm talking, you know, you know, football wise, you know, back and forth, back and forth. And they just keep coming at each other. That's why it makes it so much fun. Well, you just saw the fundamentals on display there where Jack Ebbing fights off a blocker, grabs the grabs Joel Garrett, picks him up, and waits for his defenders <laughs> to come help him. It's just textbook fundamental football as Osborne pitches to Garrett. Garrett's got a crease on along this near sideline down to the 10-yard line before he's upended. But it's going to be first and goal for the Tigers inside the Betty's Natural Foods red zone. Yeah, this is, this is a really nice uh, play call here and just getting uh, Ebbing into the short side of the field, or excuse me, Joel Garrett into the short short side of the field and really making a good play. A nice uh, job by uh, A.J. Harlemert, or Evan Harlemert there to, to make that stop. But Versailles, they're they're here, Garrett. They're, they're marching, they're trying to open this door, knocking on the door is what I'm trying to say, uh, you know, to get this, uh, this touchdown here to maybe put them up a score. So it is first and goal, first and 10 from the 11, I should say. They did not get inside the 10-yard line. So the Wright State Lake Campus first down is first and 11. As the ball's loose, Garrett gets the fortunate pickup and it's brought down at the 14-yard line there. I'm not sure if Connor Stonebreaker wasn't ready for the football or it was just lower. Maybe that was Michael Osborne in the backfield. But nonetheless, Versailles fortunate, but a penalty actually on the play. You get a look at the Lakefield Industrial Welding Supplies replay. And that's kind of, I guess, that, that you know, the, it's great to have a, a mixture of quarterbacks coming in and changing things up and kind of keeping the defense on your toes. But I guess that's also the danger of not having that consistency of, of uh, you know, a guy that maybe has not had as many reps at that uh, at the quarterback and, you know, maybe not being able to, to handle a, a bad snap, but uh, the penalty also hurts. Well, down at this area, you're at the 16-yard line. Connor Stonebreaker's a six foot eight wide receiver at the bottom, at the left of your screen. But Osborne fakes the pitch, plenty of room in the middle of the field. Osborne trying to get to the pylon. He does get in from 16 yards out. Michael Osborne's third touchdown of the night makes it 27-20.
Tigers after the Allen Davis Insurance touchdown. Well, and you're going to watch this replay here, Garrett. I'm not sure you're going to see too many high school plays <laughs> that are as good as this. I mean, look at that athletic ability and the speed burst. I mean, he not only broke that first level, you can see him here, but when he gets into the second level, the yeah, linebacker yeah, level, the there is not a person on that field that can catch him, and I just love his effort there at the end. Michael Osborne came in tonight with four rushing touchdowns, four receiving touchdowns, and four passing touchdowns. He's got two receptions for touchdowns and one rushing touchdown now as Joel Garrett's on for the extra point. The kick is up, and the kick is through the uprights and good. 28-20. Tigers with the eight-point lead on the Holman's Insurance scoreboard here on WOSN. Tonight's Red Zone brought to you by Betty's Natural Foods. Betty's Natural Foods is your partner for better health. Visit Betty'sNaturalFoods.com to learn more as the Tigers get their first touchdown from the Betty's Natural Foods Red Zone. And they lead 28-20. As Leland Bolin has the football teed up. Coldwater now changing up where Blade Busher will line up as an up back instead of deep guy because for sales continues to kick it a little squibber and that one rolls out of bounds. Out of bounds. So Coldwater going to have good starting field position. Yeah, and I like what Curtis Dewar did there. He just went ahead and uh, he could have returned it, but he let that ball bounce out of bounds and that's going to be a penalty on uh, the Tigers. It's going to give Coldwater, uh, you know, really good field position to, to start this, uh, this drive. And, you know, we've just seen back and forth the entire night, Garrett. I would not be surprised to see Coldwater kind of answer this this call from Versailles. Yeah, the, the Tigers have put a, a eight point advantage on, but it's still a one score game. And um, we, I, I, at least I've been impressed by uh, Braylon Harlemer's work at quarterback here, where um, he's got a couple of touchdown passes under his belt that uh, he's played well coming, having to come in for Marcel Blanc in game, who's out for cold water and on crutches on the far sideline and obviously not returning to this game today. Yeah, he's done a really nice job, and it's going to be interesting to see kind of here in this fourth quarter coming up uh, what they allow him to do and uh, what uh, how the defense responds as well. Harlebert into the open field brought down by Titus Garrett, but it's still a gain of about five yards there by Harlebert on the carry. You see the Leifeld replay as Garrett just grabs onto the ankle and has to tug him down. Well, and I think the the, the play of the uh, the two the front the front lines here the the line of scrimmage is going to become critical because now you're getting into the part of the game and I know it's later in the season that's cooler and you're not seeing guys cramp or anything like that but you know, this has been a hard hitting game and these guys have been beating on each other for three quarters and uh, you know you're, that one of, one of these sides is eventually going to wear down. Harlemer looks to throw the double move. He's got Evan Harlemer. and there's a pass interference play. Yeah, that was pretty obvious. Yeah, everybody in the uh, everybody. In HB Oldfield saw that where Harlemert <laughs> turned. He was going to have his defender beat like a drum, and he just tugged on for dear life. You know everybody's seen it when the Versailles fans are looking up, the flag goes, and they go right back right. to the popcorn. Yeah, no, nobody, no. Nobody, no, no, <laughs> no reaction, no, oh, come on. <laughs> So, yeah, it was pretty obvious. You see the tug on the jersey. and um, I like the shot, though. That's the same play called um, as that they called earlier on, on the touchdown. They're getting that kind of that double move, which we see a lot from Coldwater, especially when they run those hitches over and over again. And, uh, you know, Harlemert's shown that he can throw that ball. I think that they still have to, to make sure that they defend that because that is a threat for Coldwater. Well, and really, that's it's probably a good play by the Versailles defender because if he doesn't tug on Evan Harlemert, he's alone like the chess club president on prom night. <laughs> because he, just, he had his dis receiver or defender just beat as Harlemert drops that one at the sticks. But he was it was going to be a touchdown if that receiver yeah. or that defender didn't just grab on for dear life and you know and, and, and as a coach you hate to say that there's a good penalty but sometimes that is a good penalty especially in high school football when it's when it's 15 yards you know in the nfl if it's right. you know a 40 yard uh, pass play you know you're going to get the ball at the one yard line or whatever but uh, you know in high school it's really a, a, a smart call especially like you said if you know you're going to get beat so first in or excuse me second and 10 after the drop there by harlemert where braylon harlemert turns and fires caught by aj harlemert and he's immediately struck down by Gar Groff as Colton Groff gets another tackle here as we're under 20 seconds remaining in this third quarter. And that might be the last play of the third quarter, but I'm a, I, I really uh, like 
what Braylon Harlemert's doing, I feel like he's just getting better every play and starting to feel a lot more comfortable. He looks more comfortable back there at that quarterback position. So that was the final play of the third quarter, fourth quarter action coming up. Versailles leads by eight in this Mac showdown on WYCN. The Bradford Pumpkin Show going on in the uh, I guess the lure of the Bradford Pumpkin Show is the confetti that the Bradford Band sells. Uh, over 10,000 pounds of confetti being made. I don't know if the, you know, <laughs> the, the kids at the school, they, you know, oh, sorry, I was supposed to turn that homework in, but I, I actually left it in the confetti box. I'm yes. sorry, math teacher, but uh, it's, it's now um, going to be sold at the Pumpkin Show. But uh, just a ridiculous warehouse is full of confetti that they'll use at the Bradford Pumpkin Show going on this week just down the road here from H.B. Hall Field. Third and four here for the Cavaliers into Versailles territory as Harlemert is able to pick up the Lake, the Wright State Lake Campus first down there as Braylon Harlemert rushes for that first down. That was just a really big first down. You can see him uh, get the play action fake. It looked like it might have been a pass, but went ahead and, and made it a draw play. And you can see Coldwater really kind of knocking on the door now within Versailles territory. And, you know, before we move forward, we're talking about that, Garrett, I'm, I'm impressed with your, your diversified announcing ability. You can go from the Bradford pumpkin sure. show, um, talking about confetti, to a great Mac football game. You know, Ben Reif has really put a lot on your plate tonight. Now, the, the amount of times I had to ask. Now, that's the Bradford Pumpkin Show, right? Now, Bradford Pumpkin Festival. I can't even say the word Bradford right now, <laughs> so you're giving me too much credit. As Harlemert scampers, makes one man miss at the open field, gets down to just shy of the 30-yard line, a gain of seven there for Harlemert, Braylon Harlemert, and really just kind of putting the cold water offense on his back here yeah. uh, in this in this duty as the backup quarterback where um, we had talked about the challenges of playing with a backup quarterback where, you know, I don't I don't know that either Coldwater's done a nice job of playing with a backup quarterback or we haven't seen the, the, the disadvantages, so to speak, so far that you might expect from from putting a junior wide receiver in at the quarterback spot. The, the good news is that he, he as, a, as a receiver, he knows the routes, he knows the schemes, he's been in the huddle, so he has that with him. It's just getting that, that uh, uh, I guess, uh, comfortability in that different position. And then, you know, these big plays, like that's just a, a great defensive play by Versailles. Now you're in these big third down positions that you're going to have to make big plays and, um, you know, you see uh, Versailles there, Titus Garrett just comes through and makes a great play. That is a nice tackle by Titus Garrett on the carry by Jack Ebbing, and he pushes Ebbing back about a yard. So it's going to be third and four here for Coldwater with the ball to the 31-yard line. And again, this is getting to, especially down eight here in this fourth quarter, this is four down territory. Yeah, correct? absolutely. This is you, you got two downs here to get a first down. And you don't have to get it on this play, but you do you do want to get it. So you know, don't be surprised to see some some running here, which you're not going to see. Harlemert pressured, lost the football ball, still loose, and Titus Garrett has it. Titus Garrett pounced on the football at the 40-yard line. A costly turnover there for the Cavaliers, but the linebacker play by Titus Garrett causes the fumble, gets it back, and that's a big play by that Versailles D. Yeah, Titus Garrett just just he he made a great play the last time and. I think you know he's kind of the, the, the he's a linebacker, but they have him blitzing off the edge, and he's right in position where uh, that fumble happens, and he's on top of it, and makes a huge momentum shift for the Tigers. So 9:49 to go, and Versailles will trot the offense out onto the field with Michael Osborne in the backfield with Joel Garrett in a timeout called by Coldwater. The Tiger faithful rise to their feet for sales of the football when we come back on WOSN. We're now accepting nominations for the John Reed Leadership Award. Nominate coaches who exemplify Christian character, humility, discipline, mentorship, leadership, commitment to others, and excellence on the field. Nominations can be made at WOSN.TV slash John Reed. 28-20 the score for sales with the advantage and one of the keys to the game that Coldwater said we had to know where Michael Osborne was at all times. He was lined up at quarterback, and the Cavaliers used a timeout. Yeah, and, and they're going to have to. After seeing what he did this last drive, they've got to maybe keep two, two sets of eyes on him. Joel Garrett gets the handoff. Got back to the line of scrimmage, but he shoved backwards. Mason Welsh in on the stop for Coldwater. Gain of maybe half a yard there 
Fort Garrett on the carry. And like I said earlier, I said, you know, one of the things that Coldwater always seems to do is their defense, when they need to rise to the occasion, they step up and they make big plays. And right now, you know, with the offense, just I wouldn't say the offense is struggling, but with just, you know, um, with what's going on offensively, they really need the defense to make a big stop here for their team, momentum. Cavaliers load the box as Osborne lines up at quarterback. Hasn't really thrown the ball all that much yet, and he'll keep it himself this time. Immediately pressured and brought down. Will Fox in on the stop for Coldwater once again. It's going to be third and long here for the Tigers. Yeah, they're they're really putting the pressure, and you can see them defensively really stepping up. Uh, one of the, the people that uh, allowed that play to happen was number 25, Cody Depweg, just really getting into the backfield and kind of blowing up the play. It allowed the other defensive linemen to pursue down the, the line of scrimmage and uh, keep them from getting a gain. So third and nine. Osborne at the shotgun quarterback spot once again. Joel Garrett to his right. Two receivers split out wide to each side. Osborne on the draw, looking for the Lake Campus first down. He's got it in more to the 40-yard line into Coldwater territory, and Michael Osborne's picked up a Wright State Lake Campus first down. That's just where it's brutal because defensively, you've really got things covered. You're you're in your coverage, which they're running cover three. You're running a stunt up front, and then Osborne just runs this quarterback draw, and there's really just no way to defend it, especially with his speed and the size that he has. So a big pickup there for the Tigers on 39. Michael Osborne scampers for the first down to keep the drive alive. Osborne with a rushing touchdown, two receiving touchdowns tonight. Back at quarterback. We'll send Titus Garrett in motion. Joel Garrett the handoff. And Joel Garrett brought down from behind by Shane Ontrop. And the ball's loose. And the football goes to the Cavaliers. Yeah, that's a, just a huge stop. Like we said earlier, is talking defensively, you know, uh, Coldwater needing to make a big play. And there you have it right there. I mean, that was a huge turnover for the Cavaliers. And just when you think they're done and you think the game is maybe going to turn the tide and it's going to go in Versailles' way, here we are back with Coldwater with the football in a fourth quarter. And you just really can't count them out, Garrett. So Joel Garrett fumbles. It looks like Mason Welsh was the one who came up with it for the Cavaliers after the tackle by Shane Ontrop. And now Coldwater will bring the offense back out on the field, trailing by eight on the Holman's Insurance scoreboard. Still plenty of time to go in this fourth quarter. Braylon Harleman will direct the offense with two wide receivers split out wide to each side. They'll send a man in motion. A penalty flag thrown. A second penalty flag thrown as Harlemert pushed out of bounds near the first down marker. But we had an illegal shift by the Cavaliers. Yeah, and that's I think that's just the confusion, you know, maybe of having some new guys out there. Uh, you could see one of the receivers trying to get another guy lined up, maybe confusion on what the formation was. Then a guy goes in motion and it's too bad because it was a nice, uh, nice big chunk of yards, uh, you know, gained. But it's gonna, it's gonna be resulted in a five-yard penalty. You see the illegal shift there, and you, you mentioned John, the wide receiver to the near sideline. Uh, when they sent a man in motion, they didn't have enough guys on the line of scrimmage. They had two guys in motion. You had an illegal formation. Yeah. Just uh, a calamity of errors there. It's going to be first and 15 now for the Cavaliers. Typically, the quarterback can kind of fix that. But you know, you got a lot on Braylon Harlemer's plate right now. We got a reverse there as A.J. Harlemer looks to throw. He's got a man deep, and he did not catch it. Evan Harlemer, great coverage provided there by Peyton Platfoot. But the Cavaliers go reverse pass there. It's A.J. Harlemer gets his first throw of the night, looking for Evan Harlemer, and he was pretty well blanketed. Yeah, and I, I, I you know, Running a trick play right now is a good idea. It uh, it just didn't fool uh, Platfoot, and he really did have nice coverage. I know both guys are kind of pushing back and forth. It looked like the cold water sideline kind of wanted a pass interference, but you know, and I think in these tight situations, uh, these tight games, they're they're going to be pushing no for the ball. ball. Absolutely. So second and 15 now for the Cavs. Harlemer hangs in the pocket. And now we'll sprint up the middle of the field. Harlemer into the open field, looking for a right State Lake campus first down. He gets to the midfield stripe, and he does move the chains. That's a nice scamper by the junior wide receiver playing quarterback. <laughs> I think that you've seen on both sides of the ball tonight that these quarterbacks are the keys to their offense. I mean, every time, you know, it, rather it's, uh, it's, it's Osborne for Versailles, 
or now Harlemer for Coldwater. These guys are making huge plays, especially with their feet getting first downs for their teams. Approaching seven minutes to go in this MAC showdown between the eight no Cavaliers and the six and two Tigers. It's first and ten for Coldwater, just into Versailles territory at the 49 yard line. Harlemer in the gun with three wide receivers to his right. And we get a timeout called by Versailles before the snap. So 28-20, Versailles with the lead. Both teams now with two timeouts remaining here. And really, John, when you take a look at the, the resiliency of Coldwater, a couple of times they've been faced with, you know, um, right there with second and 15 where you're thinking, all right, well, how, how do we get out of this? And uh, Braylon Harlemer just says, well, I'm going to do it myself and, and scamper for that first down. This has been uh, a, a nice showing here for Coldwater winner or lose. Yeah, I mean, I think that this is the sign of championship teams and teams that typically go deep in the playoffs is that they're resilient, that they, they persevere in, in spite of what has happened, who has been hurt, who's not playing. And uh, you can just see both these teams kind of getting back and uh, bouncing back each time they need to be. And Coldwater, you know, no matter what happens here tonight, they got a dandy of a matchup next week against Marion Local, and then we can put the, the playoffs opening round because I think once the football was kicked off on August 19th, Coldwater was in the playoffs. I'm not <laughs> sure how that uh, necessarily works, but then uh, Versailles as well has Minster next week, another uh, a, another playoff caliber team. They, yeah. Versailles already has played four teams with six wins. They played Coldwater tonight with eight. They'll play Minster next week, with uh, so they'll finish the season playing six teams with at least six wins. So it's a difficult schedule there for the Tigers. Both teams will be glad to play in the playoffs. They'll get a break a little bit. Yes. <laughs> Harlemer throws, just has to get rid of it. Throws it up ahead Harlemer to pass. Dewar. It's incomplete, however. That was a really good timeout by Versailles. Uh, you can see there was some, maybe some miscommunication happening on defense, and, and uh, Coach uh, Jones just wanted to go ahead and get his team settled. Uh, and, and maybe even schematically getting some matchups. You see some guys flip-flopping on the field trying to, to find certain people. That just that, That's just the season coach, veteran coach, making a timeout like that and making those adjustments. So second and ten here for the Cavaliers. It really, when you look at the keys of the game for both squads, John, um, they've probably got both sides have, you know, two things that we thought we did really well, and then one thing, you know, Coldwater or Versailles wanted to limit big plays. Um, and Coldwater's got a couple of big plays. They wanted to win the turnover battle. They would have liked to get that interception <laughs> there from Michael Osborne. But uh, both sides really have, can probably point to, hey, the keys are these three things. And both of them, I, I think, can say, okay, we did these two things really well. Yep. And this one got a little, got a little stuff to work on. Yeah, and I, and I, you know, this is, uh, you know, when they give you those keys, these, they, they, these coaches know this is what it's going to take to win these games. And I, I think the biggest thing is that uh, if you're the opposing coach, you try to keep that other team from <laughs> achieving those keys and and that's just something that we've seen tonight over and over again these teams bouncing back and forth and and getting after each other and making a great play on special teams and you think it's you know it's going to go one way and it goes the other way big play here in this football game third and ten Cavaliers just inside Versailles territory Braylon Harlemer back to pass stands in the pocket and fires a football and it's intercepted picked off by Peyton Platfoot or excuse me of Colton Groff of Versailles, and we just mentioned the turnover battle. Versailles now has a plus one in that category. Yeah, and you know, they, they, they when they needed a big play and when they needed a turnover, uh, they, they came up big with that. And, and here's the thing, schematically, uh, Garrett, and I don't want to bore fans with, with coach talk, but they've been primarily in a 4-4, cover three defense the entire game. They went to a three-man front and went to a two-high safety look adding one more defensive back. You could call it a nickel package, dime package, whatever you want to call it. But there's just more defenders in that defensive backfield and uh, less people to throw to on the cold water side, and that results in a big turnover for the Tigers. So Versailles gets the turnover, and they'll line up in the I formation with Osborne under center. Osborne hands off to Joel Garrett, and he's spun forward to the 47-yard line. Gain of four there on the carry for the junior. 
Yeah, a little surprised they're gonna they're gonna get in the I formation and uh, and tr you know try to run the ball. I, I'm guessing this is their short yardage. We have only seen it one other time this game, and that was in a short yardage situation. But they've been so successful continuing in their in their spread sets. Um, but maybe this is just an opportunity to chew up some clock and and try to keep the ball away from cold water, especially having the ball in the middle of the field. Well, that was gonna be my question to you: Was is this just the hey, we're just gonna power ahead? Uh, we're going to run the football, we're going to run the clock, and if you can stop us, congratulations, but we're going to make you stop us. I think you have to have that mindset, and I think you have to have the mindset that Michael Osborne's going to have his ball in his hands here in the end of the fourth quarter. Osborne gets out to just shy of the 50-yard line. Another gain of four there for Versailles. We'll bring up third and a long three as the Tigers content to watch the clock roll. You get a great look at the Layfeld Industrial Motor Supplies replay there as Sam Obringer makes the stop for cold water from his middle linebacker spot. And I think, you know, we're looking ahead just a bit, but, you know, even if you don't get the first down here, what do you do? Because I think you want to pin them deep and you want to you want to have to make them go the entire field, which they've shown that they, they haven't been super successful, especially in the second half doing that. So you're going to see Versailles get a timeout here and really try to, to clarify what they want to do here on this big third down. Yeah, 5.13 to go here in this fourth quarter, and it is a big third down, 28-20. And I think, John, uh, darn near every time we've said, hey, what are they going to do here? We've been wrong as you take a look yeah. at the computer points here. Coldwater solidly in second place. Uh, Liberty Center gets the benefit of playing in a conference where there's some D5, D4 schools. Um, and Coldwater, you know, the, they played a D4 school and a D3 school in their non-conference matchups, but Liberty Center gets to do it kind of throughout the, the regular season there. But you take a look at the computer ratings as Bluffton hanging on to the final spot there at um, 16th, where th this region is it's a meat grinder. There. You're 5 and 3, and you're at 16, where um, you know, for instance, I'm a Parkway grad. The Panthers are uh, two and six and are in 17th place in, in their region. If they win one more game, they're probably in at three and seven or four and six. Where Bluffton has to, you know, be seven and three at minimum probably to make the playoffs. Those two teams, Liberty Center and Eastwood, are just dynamic. And along with Coldwater, that might be one of the best regions in Ohio. Yeah. I mean, there is just it is a stiff region, and you know, getting in is an accomplishment, but. Not only getting in, but then you have a battle right away. Third and four, Osborne trying to draw the Cavaliers off sides, and now we'll turn to the sideline and get further instructions. Two wide receivers and a wing to his left as Titus Garrett will now come in motion. Joel Garrett now to the right of Osborne as well. Osborne turns and pitches to Garrett. He runs right into the arms of Will Fox, and he does not get the right State Lake campus first down. So they tried to they try to draw him off on a hard count. I think that's a good idea. And but Coldwater really has everybody up on the line of scrimmage. No safeties playing cover zero and Will Fox. What a just a great job of, of getting in there and, and really shedding the tackle and Cody Detwig was help was there to help him clean it up and now you're really put Versailles in a tough position. I think this is a good idea to punt and maybe play the field position game. Cavaliers have gotten close to blocking A.J. Griesdorn's punts a couple of times here as he'll be back deep to punt for the Tigers and A.J. Harlemert back deep to return for Coldwater. Cavaliers don't really send a rush as the ball bounces at the 15-yard line, takes a great Versailles bounce and goes out of bounds inside the 10-yard line. And if you've scouted cold water at all, you know how uh, dangerous uh, A.J. Harlemer has been on punt returns. So they could not have asked for a better play, of kicking that out of bounds and really pinning cold water deep. You take a look at the Division Six Region 24 computer ratings where you see there Versailles in third place. Uh, but the top three occupied by Lima Land Schools with Marion Local already locked into a home game. Allen East at second place. And then Versailles, you get Parkway there at uh, 16th in their region. There's going to be a lot of teams in Division 6, Region 24 from Lima Land. Yeah, it's nice to see the Panthers in there too. I know that they have you know are 2-6, and six, but they've had a good season. They've really played competitively, won some, some big games, and it's nice that they're in position now to make the playoffs. Harlemert rolling to his right, turns and fires, and it's dropped. Late Busher had it in his pocket just for a moment to drop the football right at the first down marker. Yeah, and at this point, you know, they're, they're going to have to eliminate those. I know they're physical mistakes, but to me they're a little bit more mental too because these are these are makeable plays. These are plays that you have to make. You have to catch the ball, and you got to get yards when you have that opportunity because just the opportunities are not there very often. 
So 28-20, Coldwater trails by eight with 4.15 to go on the Holman's Insurance scoreboard. At their own nine yard line, Raylan Harlemer joined in the backfield by Jack Ebbing on second and 10. Harlemer sprints up the middle of the field, has room to run, he's got the right State Lake Campus first down and more. Cut down at the 25 yard line after the stop. Well, when you when you go to the, this package that Versailles is running um, with the extra defensive back, the advantage is you've got more guys in, in coverage. The disadvantage is now you've got more guys in coverage, okay? <laughs> and so it, it opens up a running lane, especially for the quarterback uh, to run on a draw, especially when those receivers are running downfield. And don't be shocked to see Harlem Mert and Coach Otten run that play a few more times. Lucas Stamina on the stop, the last play for Versailles. 3.45 to go. Harlemer with his heels at the 20 yard line. Back to pass, looking, fires, floats one down the middle of the field. Too high for his intended target, Curtis Dewar. That will stop the clock and bring up second and 10. Yeah, it was just overthrown just a bit. Dewar was open there just for a split second, and uh, he just overshot him just a little bit. Um, that would have been a big play. But now, you know, it's the, the clock. I do think you have to factor it in, Garrett. I mean, I don't think yeah. you can just take your time. I mean, you're, you're, you, they call it a two minute drill because you should be in a rush. But, you know, if you're cold water, you probably haven't practiced the two minute drill with a new quarterback at any time lately. So I think you got to kind of, kind of pick up the pace here a little bit. Well, and also, you've only got two timeouts. You can't think, okay, if we don't get this, you know, we're just going to, uh, punt it and get the football back as Evan Harlemer's racing down the near sideline into Versailles territory. Shoved down by Michael Osborne, but he's down to the 47-yard line. That's a big right State Lake campus first down. Yeah, this is just a nice play by Evan Harlemer. And he, he not only gets the ball on a quick hitch route, but he breaks it. He gets up out of bounds and huge yardage. And, you know, I think that this, the coverage is going to be soft. They don't want to get anybody behind them, so you have to take these opportunities where you're hitting these underneath routes, especially with this amount of time in the game, and you might just have to just uh, play those sidelines right now until you can get farther down the field. Three wide receivers to the top of your screen as Harlemer's in the shotgun. You have to slip past a tackler. Can't is Carson St or Ethan Stover, excuse me, comes off the edge and makes the big stop. I feel like Ethan Stover's just been super aggressive tonight on defense, and you feel like whenever there's just a play in the backfield, he's the one making it, kind of uh, playing with this uh, this aggression, and you can see his passion yeah. for the, the play as well at the end. Cavaliers quickly back to the line. Harlemer rolling to his right, looking, puts his foot in the ground and reverses field. Harlemer scampering, and now has a wide open Evan Harlemer, but he had to reverse his hips and try to get back to the football, and a little miscommunication there is costly for the Cavaliers. Well, I think what happened was that uh, Evan Harlemer thought that uh, Braylon Harlemer was going to run the ball. At this point, I think he's, he's he turns around and he tries the block, and he sees him open and tries to hit him, and there's just, like you said, the miscommunication there on what is going to actually happen in the, in the play. So third and 15. Now for Coldwater with under three minutes to go on the Holman's Insurance scoreboard. The for sales faithful rise to their feet to make some noise knowing this is a big, pivotal third down play in this Matt Clash. And Coldwater gonna call a timeout. We got a penalty flag from one official and a timeout by the other. Yeah, it looks like the play clock was running down there, Garrett. They were either gonna get a delay a game and so they went ahead and burned a timeout. So it will remain third and 15 and with under three minutes to go. And we've seen a couple of different times where Coldwater's ran a screen in this situation. They've ran a quarterback draw in this situation. Obviously, you're going to go for it on fourth down, I have to imagine. So uh, is this third down just one of those, all right, let's see if we can't make it fourth and seven, or are you trying to get 15 yards here? Well, I've been 100% wrong tonight, so I will tell you what I think, so it'll probably be opposite of that, but I think what you said is, is just that. You're not going to try to get 15 here. I think you try to get 8, you try to get 10, just to put yourself in that 4th and 5 or that 4th and 6. And One play I would look at, and it's basically because of that soft coverage, just having Evan Harlemer just run that hitch route down here to the short side of the field. It looks like they're playing off of him. Um, they got an extra DB. They, that was when they had that big play there where they just got him the ball and he was able to get an open space. So don't be shocked to see trips to the far side and Evan Harlemer at one-on-one -on -one back here on the 
on the on the um, on the short side of the field. We do have a linebacker walked out. Looks like they're going to double cover him here. And Chip Hotton gave some further instructions to Blake Busher. He's the inside receiver at the top of your screen. Harlemert standing in the pocket. Has time to throw, will fire, throws it up for grabs, and it's caught by Busher. Busher slips a tackle and is inside the Betty's Natural Foods red zone and is inside the 15-yard line. Now, can you believe that play, Garrett? I mean, that ball was thrown in, in, in a position where you didn't know where it was going to go, and Blade Busher readjusts his route, comes back to the football, and makes a huge play for the Cavaliers. Just when you think they're about done, they make a big play. Busher comes back to undercut Henry for the reception. Brayton Henry thought he had an interception. Instead, Blake Busher has a Wright State Lake Campus first down. So the ball now at the 13-yard line after the Wright State Lake Campus first down. Braden Harlemer in the gun, runs the counter, scampers to the far sideline. He's very close to another Wright State Lake campus first down. Yeah, I mean, now they're 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 knocking on the door. They've got the ball inside the 10. Um, the the Coldwater fans are on their feet. And you almost, I don't know, Garrett, you almost have to think about time once again. Do you want to you want to have this give for sales this much time? Um, especially if you got to get a you got to get a two-point conversion here if you do score. Each side with one timeout. The upcoming play, the 10th play of the drive here for the Cavaliers has started at their own nine yard line. Second and one from the four yard line. Got a full house backfield now. And a timeout called by the Cavaliers as the play clock was down to zero once again. Yeah, and, and it was smarter Braylon Harlemer. He turned around and he's motioning timeout and when he did, Coach Otten was motioning timeout. They're both, you know, yelling at the officials to get that timeout. So um, a good idea to do that in this critical situation. You take a look at the upcoming schedule here on WOSN. You get Brian and Swanton from the Golden Bear Sports Network. Lima Senior with a chance uh, to uh, grab a victory there against the Toledo St. John's uh, Knight, or, uh, Titans, excuse me, Minster and New Bremen, a clash of rivals on State Route 66. And then on Sunday, Fort Laurie and St. Henry Volleyball. Talk about two Good matchups there. The yeah. Allen East Mustang Brass Invitational, the band show on Monday, and then Kalamazoo at Albion for college volleyball. That'll be live on Tuesday night here on WLSN. And then next week you get the tournament starting in soccer, uh, volleyball, and then a Thursday night special between Spencerville and Delphus Jefferson there uh, at Stadium Park. And Antwerp versus Edgerton in week 10 of the high school football season live next week here on WOSN. So second and one from the four, and it looked like Coldwater had a, had a full house backfield lined up the last time as they'll have Cody Depweg lined up at running back beside Harlemert. Harlemert will drive straight ahead. Did he get into the end zone? He did. A four-yard touchdown run. Wow, big play by Braylon Harlemer to get his team back into this game. But I think the critical thing we need to look at now, Garrett, is well, once we see this replay here, you see just some linemen here pushing and blocking and getting in there. And he reaches over the back and makes a big play. But getting themselves, uh, there's no timeouts. So they've got to get organized here because they got to go for two and they got to, they got to get this two point conversion. Uh, you hate to say this is the biggest play of the game, but it is the biggest play of the game. Did they run that play knowing? We're going to run basically the same formation and run something off of that for the two-point conversion play. I, I I just wonder. Yeah, I think so. I you, think you're exactly right. Yeah, I think that uh, you, you know get maybe the you Tim Tebow pop pass or something. You know, I think you got to do something here. And um, like I said, there's no timeouts left. So you know, we'll see kind of what Coach Otten has in his in his tool chest right now. Cavaliers have to get the two-point conversion. Harlemert turns, fires. He gets it to Evan Harlemert for the two-point conversion. Well, Evan Harlemert's been the guy. When they need a big play, they go to Evan Harlemert. And what grit by the Coldwater Cavaliers to come in here and just get after it and tie this game. And boy, hats off to Braylon Harlemer. Put in a tough spot. He has come up big tonight. Well, how many times, John, have we talked about Evan Harlemer that he's the guy that when you need a reception, when you need that six yard gain on third down, or in this case, a two point conversion, you don't overthink it. You throw it to the guy that you know is going to get you what you need. Yeah, and he was the guy that made the big play early in that drive to getting them, uh, I think, a big gain there, you know, on the other, uh, other side of the 50 to get them past the 50. 
And now, you know, that is a safe call, just an easy slant route. I think everybody in the stadium thought that Braylon Harlemert was going to run it or mm -hmm. there's going to be some kind of trickery or something. And they just run a simple slant right, right, right across the middle, and he's wide open. So after the Allen Davis insurance touchdown, we're tied at 28. As Justin Kalp has the football teed up. And, John, you mentioned it, that there's a minute 48 left on the clock here for sales. Still a timeout. We'll see what they can do on the return here, but still plenty of time on that Holman's insurance scoreboard. Yeah, and I think that, uh, you know, uh, Coldwater is probably thinking one name right now. That is Michael Osborne, and then they got to get a stop here. So Osborne will catch the kickoff at the 10-yard line. Osborne slips a tackle, slips another tackle, brings it out to the 35-yard line before we get a gigantic stalemate. The old rugby scrum will push him out <laughs> to the 37-yard line, and that's where Versailles will begin their drive with 137 to go. Yeah, plenty of time trying to get yourself in the field goal position. Even if it's a long field goal, even if it's maybe something that's even a little bit out of reach, um, you know, I, I think the uh, you know the long that they've uh, committed or uh, converted this year is 31. You can take a shot, and you know, in this type of situation, this kind of game, just get in somewhat position to, to try to take that field goal. Tigers have spent the majority of the fourth quarter with Michael Osborne at quarterback, and he'll line up there again with 137 to go, and he'll roll to the near side. But before he could get going, we got a false start penalty against the Tigers. Yeah, and that's going to hurt. I mean, they, they, they need every minute they can get, every second that they can get. They've only got one timeout. And the cold water defense really stepping it up. You, know, you don't want to put yourself in a situation where you got to try to throw the ball like you know, really downfield because, you know, coverage-wise, we've seen Coldwater try to do that, and Versailles uh, were able to convert on a turnover. Um, but but now they're kind of in that position with a minute 35 to go that they're going to have to take a shot down the field. Are you surprised at all that they've gone to Osborne here in this fourth quarter rather than Stonebreaker? No. I mean, and, and I think right now they just got to put the, the ball in their playmaker's hands, and he has the ball in his hands right now. Osborne, the keeper, scampers back just shy of the original line of scrimmage but dives for the four-yard gain. So 127 to go. And I think it's—I don't think it's a—it's an indictment on Connor Stonebreaker. I just think at this point, Osborne's got to have the ball in his hand, whether that's you know running or throwing, and 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 you know they can do so much more out of it. But you know, typically they like to get him the ball as a receiver. But it's pretty obvious when he lines up at receiver you know, who to cover and who they're going to double cover. So I think by putting him in, him in at quarterback, it kind of makes them a little bit less uh, predictable. Second and 11 for the guys in orange. Osborne in the gun. Rolls to this near side. Will turn, fire, has a man deep. It's A.J. Grease doing it. The ball's intercepted by the Cavaliers. Evan Harlemert picked it off. I'll tell you what, Evan Harlemert has been the man. I mean, simply that, when they need a play. I feel like I've said this nine times tonight, but when they need a play, it's Evan Harlemer, and he comes up big here. By the way, watch the cannon by Michael uh, Osborne. Throw. I mean, he just lets this thing loose, and you got to start out by saying great coverage by Curtis Dewar, staying on his man and then tipping that ball, and now they are in position uh, to potentially, Garrett, if they can get in field, field goal position, which they've had a long uh, a 43 this year. Boy, wouldn't that be something. Well, John, I was going to ask you, with Osborne being a quarterback rather than Stonebreaker, do you have to have that conversation of, hey, it's okay if we don't get a first down here, but yeah. you can't throw an interception. Yep. And, and that's what, what ends up happening with under 120 to go. Yeah, you just you can't commit that turnover at this point. you gotta, you got to hang on to the ball, even if you're just taking uh, time off the clock and not getting first downs. Harlemert, scampers. Harlemert in the open field. Gets the right State Lake campus first down and more. Harlemert steps out of bounds at the midfield stripe. It's a gain of 21 there on first wow. down. I'll tell you what, this game has been a game of just, it's like a cliffhanger. And I don't, I don't know if you'll see a better game than we've been able to yeah. watch tonight. I mean, this has been back and forth and two great teams. And Braylon Harlemert just makes a, a great play here. And, and, and the awareness to not only to elude these tackles, but then to get to the sideline and get out of bounds so the clock is stopped. Get a great look at it there on the Layfeld Industrial Welding Supplies replay as we approach one minute to play on the Holman's Insurance scoreboard. Braylon Harlemer, quick throws, balls batted up into the air. Now the Tigers are trying to say that it's uh, <laughs> that's a fumble. It is not. It is an incomplete pass, and it'll bring up second and ten. It's not a bad, it's not a bad idea. You know, the, it's not a, it's not an incomplete pass until the officials say it yeah, is. Yeah, I'm so. guessing, the, you know, maybe <laughs> those guys are in a drama club, or <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm not, I'm not certain there. But uh, 
Mitchell Bay tried to sell it. And I think you always tell your players until the officials uh, tell you no or otherwise, and you just continue to do that. So Until they say it ain't, it ain't. 28-28 <laughs> here in Versailles. Tigers looking to hand Coldwater their first loss of the season with three seconds left on the play clock. Harlemert gets it off. Stands in the pocket. Fires. Wobbly pass. That's intercepted. Yeah. I don't know if somebody got their mitts on it, but Peyton Blackfoot has another pick here tonight for the Tigers. Well, and, and he had a man open, and we'll see here on the replay if he got it, tipped it all or not. I don't, I don't think he did, oh, yeah. but just underthrew it. But it looks like, uh, you know, he had Curtis Dewar open and just kind of underthrew it here. And that could be just, you know, this has been a tough game. And, you know, actually, Garrett, I didn't think he got tipped. I can't make up my mind. Peyton Blackfoot had one interception coming into tonight. I think he's got two picks here in the fourth quarter. And now with a minute left, a timeout, does Ryan Jones just say, hey, guess what, guys? We're playing overtime, or do you push the tempo <laughs> a little bit? Here? I push the tempo. I try to get in field goal position and, you know, try to get this game over with as, as fast as you can. Osborne with three receivers to his right. Flushed from the pocket. Has to roll. He'll fire. Nearly <laughs> intercepted by the Cavaliers as the big fella, Will Fox almost got his mitts on it. Man, I'll tell you, this has just been an emotional <laughs> roller coaster back and forth. And you can see Osborne here scrambling and trying to turn his shoulders. And, yeah, Will Fox about made a huge play because if that gets tipped and it goes into the uh, arms of a cold water Cavalier, I don't think there's anyone around to tackle him. So second and 10, 51.8 seconds remaining here between Coldwater and Versailles. Michael Osborne has two receiving touchdowns and a rushing touchdown tonight for the Tigers, and he's in at the quarterback spot. Back to pass, surveys, going deep, looking for Connor Stonebreaker, the six foot eight receiver, has the football at the 20, no he didn't, he dropped it. Connor Stonebreaker went up to grab it, came down with it when he hit the turf, and he's a little slow to get up, lost the football. And it was, it was a really good effort, I mean, a great ball thrown by Osborne. I mean, he's got a really good technique, and then you can see Stonebreaker go up for it. Looks like he's going to come down with it, but just in that last instance there, there's just enough to go ahead and deflect it and make it an incomplete pass. Great look at the Layfeld Industrial and Welding Supplies replay there. So 42.5, and now third and 10 for the Tigers. You got to get some yards here. You don't want to punt the football away or give Coldwater the football back, do you? No, and absolutely not. I, you know, and now I, you might play overtime. I mean, I, I think early you don't, but now you might. You might want to. Osborne has a man deep. It's tipped and incomplete. Well, and this special teams play is going to be huge. I mean, you're talking about a fourth down. You're talking about a punt. You're talking about AJ Harlemer back there receiving punts. Um, you know, it could come down to special teams play here. Looking for Stonebreaker that time once again. A little too high for the 6'8 senior. And I, I, I've seen this once this year already between Wapak and Van Wert. <laughs> A.J. Griesdorn is back deep to punt it away to A.J. Harlemer. I'm sure he's focused on just getting the football away, but Coldwater looks like they're going to bring the house. They send a couple, and Griesdorn gets the quick kick. It's a long kick going to be caught at the 33-yard line by A.J. Harlemer. Yeah, that, uh, that's, that scenario that you've seen earlier in the season, which I think about, I don't know how many people, that's everybody like 50, in this area. people on Twitter say, saw it as well. That, that was incredible. And, uh, you know, um, I don't know if we'll see a scenario happen like that again, but you're lucky to be on the call that night, that's for sure. And that was a wild game. But, um, you know, this has been a great game as well. I mean, this has been a back-and-forth battle. And, uh, you know, both teams have, you know, there's no reason to hang their heads on either side. It's been a well-played game. Yeah, somebody's going to leave H.B. Holdfield as a loser tonight, and I don't know that either one should classify themselves as a loser. But with 27 seconds remaining, does Coldwater now just uh, – I, I think they're going to try to get into field goal range, but you'd be somewhat conservative or somewhat safe with the football here? Well, I would like to say no, but – you know, I feel like both these coaches are aggressive, and that's just their nature. I mean, and they're not going to just give in. And you can see here that – Yeah. why are they – I think Jack Ebbing got the first down. I, I okay. think Jack Ebbing picked up the Wright State Lake Campus first down, and now we get a penalty flag where I, I don't know that a penalty flag is warranted here because the officials didn't necessarily – they weren't 
I don't know if they blew, yeah, I don't know if they blew the, the, the play actually in. I mean, I, I, that's going to be tough to to throw a penalty. Um, so a delay a game against Coldwater, which seems kind of counterintuitive. Uh, I'm, I'm not I'm not certain what what just happened. To be 100 percent honest. <laughs> I, I, well, if anybody's trying to delay the game right now, it's not yes, Coldwater. Yeah, no, you're exactly right. Um, but uh, I I don't think that many people thought it was a first down. I didn't think it was a first down. So yeah, I thought he was um, just sh like yeah. just shy. Got yep. a nine yard gain. Yep. Clock should run. And I think that was the confusion is when the official did uh, blow the clock dead and. It actually worked out okay for Coldwater because now the clock has stopped. So now the Cavaliers are just going to take the knee and say, all right, no. we've traded interceptions. It's been a wild, wacky, zany fourth quarter. Yes. We are just going to go to overtime and play it from there. So we've played four quarters. We're tied at 28 on the Homans Insurance scoreboard between Coldwater and Versailles, and we'll head to overtime here as the clock strikes zero. Whew. We'll step aside. We'll come back with <laughs> overtime action for you between Coldwater and Versailles here on WOSN. Our scoreboard tonight is provided by Holman's Insurance, your trusted local insurance specialist, member of the Wayne Insurance Group, with two locations to serve you in Chickasaw and Versailles. The overtime period about to get underway here between Coldwater and Versailles. And, John, we got a dandy tonight oh, here this is, Like we said here just a minute ago, this has been as good of a high school game as you can possibly see. And now you got overtime, to, you know, kind of some funky rules here. It's going to be interesting to see kind of how it plays out here, Garrett. Blade Busher, the catch, shoved out of bounds, shy of the 10-yard line, so he didn't pick up the right State Lake campus first down. But he is pretty close to it. It'll be second and one. I felt like both these teams are kind of built for overtime as well. Like they're they're both kind of short yardage teams. They're not you know big play teams. So we may see a lot of scoring here. I don't know. And you get a great look at the overtime rules here. Um, that it's basically I, I just equate it to a baseball inning where yep. we're in the top of the first overtime yep, right now. Absolutely. Uh, Versailles is going to get their crack at it as Harlemer lines up in the shotgun with Ebbing to his left. And Harlemert will keep it himself. He's pushed backwards, spins. He does pick up the right State Lake campus first down as they're inside the Betty's Natural Foods red zone. Yeah, and I think the, the thing that's always a little bit confusing in overtime is that, you know, you start from the 20, so you can get a first down. So yeah. after you get that first down, it's, it's now first and goal. And, I, and I, the part that I do like is you, you factor in the field goal because at any point, you know, the, you're in field goal range. And so both teams – if you don't score a touchdown, you still have that opportunity to, to kick it, and then you have to make these tough decisions as do we go for it or do we kick mm -hmm. it. First and goal here from the nine for the Cavaliers is Harlemer alone in the gun. And he'll follow his blockers and gets inside the five before he's cut down by Braden Henry. But it'll be second and goal from about four and a half yards out. Get a great look at the Layfeld Industrial Welding Supplies replay here, where it gives him just a moment to let his blocker get out in front of him as he followed Braden Klosterman. And you got both guards pulling out there, and you're going to see uh, Harlemer uh, take it here on the on that QB keep. And um, now we got a back in the backfield here with Jack Ebbing, and don't be surprised to see a play action pass here. Blade Busher lined up as a wing. Ebbing, the handoff. Ebbing slips a tackle down at the two. So it'll be third and goal for Coldwater, tied at 28 here at the top of the first overtime period. And so, like, here's here's the kind of the question that you get into as a coach. It's third and three. You want to score. I mean, that's obvious. Right. But you know, at this point, what do you do? And you got to kind of plan for this in this play call. Is your mindset? getting a field goal. I mean, do you want a field goal? Or is your mindset, we have to score to win this game? Uh, I think when you've been down the entire game and you're on the road, I, I don't know, maybe scoring is, well, is the mindset. <laughs> Cavaliers have missed two extra points That's as true. well. Harlemert, the quarterback keeper. Harlemert, the touchdown. From three yards out, Evan Harlemert, or excuse me, Braylon Harlemert, scores his second rushing touchdown of the night, and that Allen Davis insurance score. Gives the Cavaliers a lead. Same play as the first down play earlier in the series. Both guards pulling. 
And like I said, I, th I feel like both these teams are kind of built for overtime, so we might be here 10 overtimes, Garrett. I hope <laughs> not. But uh, but just, uh, you know, the, these these runs, they're getting they're getting chunks of yards. And um, when you start at the 20, um, this is really, uh, I think, good for both teams here. And like you said earlier, these extra points may be the most critical part of tonight. Justin Calpon for the extra point. Cavaliers have missed two here tonight. Have made two two-point conversions. The snap is back to hold us down. The kick is up, and a kick is through the uprights and good. 35-28, Coldwater with the advantage. We'll step aside, come back with the bottom of the first overtime here on WOSN. Versailles now getting their crack at it in overtime, trailing 35-28 as Michael Osborne lined up as the quarterback, and he pumps, is flushed from the pocket, and now reverses field and gets a five-yard gain out of maybe a broken play there on first and ten. Well, immediately you've seen the back judge throw a flag, Garrett, and so it's going to be interesting to see what they call, but he he threw it immediately once the ball was snapped. There are 12 Cavaliers on the field, maybe? I mean, that's a you have to whistle that dead immediately, that's right. I think, right? Yeah, you do. So we'll see what that call is, but a penalty here for either side would be awful costly. Well, they're, they're talking it over, but I don't know if they've actually made a decision on it here. Thirty-five twenty-eight. Trying to count guys in white. Two, four, six. An illegal substitution yeah. against Coldwater. Yeah, you're right. So half the distance to the goal is what the – I don't think that's right. I think it's a five-yard penalty is what it's, it should be. Maybe I'm just the world's worst lip reader, but I <laughs> thought he said half the distance to the goal. Well, I don't think that's right. But nonetheless, yes, it is first and five from the 15-yard line. No, now it's uh, – I think you read his, his lips right, Garrett, because now you got they got the ball on the 10-yard line, first down. So now it's first and goal from the 10. So Osborne into gun. Titus Garrett to his right. Osborne keeps it himself, shoves ahead to the five-yard line. Ball still in Osborne's grasp. The way some of those guys at the bottom of the pile started <laughs> acting. Well, and I think at this point, one of the things you're going to have to really, you know, do is protect the football. I mean, yeah. because you can see cold water hands reaching in there trying to strip it. One turnover in this game is over with, so... Um, really have an emphasis on protecting the football and, and trying to not only score, but uh, do it cleanly. So the Tigers will line up in the I formation. Titus Garrett and Joel Garrett behind Osborne in the eye. Joel Garrett, the carry. Joel Garrett very close to an Allen Davis insurance mm -hmm. touchdown, but he's a half yard shy. Yeah, uh, getting in that eye formation, their short yardage uh, situation, they run it to the weak side of their formation away from their tight end and uh, really getting some good yardage there. And I like the combo blocks up front from both the tackle and guard, double team and uh, Coldwater up front. Third and goal from the one. Joel Garrett, the deep back in the eye formation. Osborne tries to shove it ahead. Michael Osborne is shy of the goal line, and it'll be fourth in the ball game for the Tigers coming up. Well, he fumbled the snap, and you can see on this replay here, he fumbles the snap, which stops him from his, his forward progression here. And I think they just want to do a quarterback sneak. So you see him here. It looks like everybody's just going to sneak, but he fumbles it, and it just allows enough time for the Coldwater defense, uh, specifically, uh, you know, uh, Cody Depweg to stick his head in there and knock uh, knock Osborne back. So fourth and goal from inside the one-yard line. Tigers have gone eye formation each of the last two times, and it looks like they'll go straight T backfield behind Osborne. Joel Garrett, Titus Garrett, the carry. Titus Garrett is in. A touchdown. Titus Garrett from one yard out. Makes it 35-34 on the Allen Davis insurance touchdown. Well, I, I think this is a good call because I don't think the play is quite over, and I think he's still moving. That's a heads-up play by Titus Garrett to yeah. reach the football out over yeah. the goal. I, and I, I agree with you, John. I think that he's still moving forward, that his yeah. forward progress I don't think was stopped. No. I mean, his feet were still moving, and, you know, he was still twisting and turning. I think that 
you know, when you're wrapped up and, and kind of stuck here. So Looks like we're going for two. Wow. 35-34 and a timeout called by the Cavaliers once Versailles showed that they were going to go for two. Well, <laughs> I like the bold call, and, and here's why. Um, I, I don't think you want to. I don't think you want to keep dragging this thing on. If you, you're in right. position to, to get the win, and you're at home, and you've been getting chunks of yards, I don't think it's a bad decision. That doesn't necessarily mean you're, it's foolproof. I'm just saying that I, I think it's a good idea to try to end the game when you can. And, and I know that there, the, the, the I guess quote unquote conventional wisdom is. If you're on the road, you go for two. If you're at home, you extend the game. Mm -hmm. the, the flip side of that is, and by no means am I making a decision on who's better or who's worse, yep. that generally the, if you feel like the other team is better than you, you want to end the game as quick as possible yeah. because if you think that they're better than you, and I'm not saying that for sales better in cold water no. or anything like that, but if that's your thought is, I don't want this game to go on any longer than, I, than it has to. And you're in reach. You can score a, uh, an extra point here, and if you get this extra point, the game is over. And I'll say this. You know, as a coach for a long time, high school extra points are not automatic. Right, They're right, just not, right. you know. So I love the idea of going for it here. And, boy, we're going to get an answer, <laughs> Garrett, right now. Michael, or excuse me, Connor Stonebreaker is six foot eight. He's lined up at the left of your screen. Osborne sends a man in motion, and he will roll. Reverses. Still rolling. Osborne going to have to run for it. And Michael Osborne short of the goal line in the cold water Cavaliers. Hang on for a 35-34 victory. Can you believe that ending, Garrett? I, I like the play call. I think that's probably something you've practiced in that situation, but cold water was ready for it. And, man, what a huge victory for the Cavaliers tonight. They tried to get cold water in misdirection one way and come back the other. I believe the intended target would have been Ethan Stover. We'll take a look at the Layfeld Industrial and Welding Supplies replay. Actually, Joel Gary, you see number nine, leak out of the backfield there. Osborne just had to scamper and then made the decision. He's got to run for it. Lost his footing at the five-yard line. And the Cavalier defense, when they needed a stop, got one, and cold water wins 35-34. Well, in, in hats off to the to the Versailles Tigers for just doing a great job. But the play, the, you know, the, the stop there, Shane Ontrop, the defensive end, running that down and then making the huge stop on Osborne. And you can see a dejected uh, Versailles team, but there's no reason to hang your heads. I know there's no moral victories, Garrett, but what a fight tonight by the Versailles Tigers. So Coldwater remains undefeated as the number one team in Division Five, And Versailles drops to six and three. 35-34 the final. We'll head down to the field and catch up with Coldwater head coach Chip Otten after this commercial break here on WOSN. Back here at Versailles wrapping up a 35-34 victory for the Coldwater Cavaliers over the Tigers. I'm Garrett Seawright joined alongside Coldwater head coach Chip Otten. And Chip, uh, every time you guys needed a play and to, to claw back into this game, you got it. What, what did you learn about your team tonight that you know they, they fight back through all that adversity? Yeah, well, you just said it, Garrett, that they, that they didn't quit. And we had, we had two or three chances where we could have just said, well, our quarterback's hurt and they're ahead of us now and let's just, let's just get it over with and finish it. But... Uh, I don't know. They, they don't. They don't. They don't think like that, and, and our coaches don't think like that. You just, you just keep playing and keep playing, and, and uh, we, we talk a lot about when the opportunity arises, make a play. Blade Busher does not play much offense all year, and he makes two or three great, great plays tonight, offensively, um, and so uh, I guess, guess we learn that that they're not going to quit. What can you say about Braylon Harlem? Or he comes in in a, in a tough spot where you, you have to replace Marcel, who does a lot of the heavy lifting for you offensively and, and, and plays pretty well for you. Yeah, that was that was uh, exciting stuff. I kept having to tell him, you know, he made he, obviously he made some mistakes, but I said, Braylon, get over. It. You're playing great. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna be happy with you no matter what after this game just just for for doing this because he's not he's he's our our real backup quarterback's been hurt all year and our sophomore we just didn't feel like. He's quite ready for this kind of moment. And Braylon, he's, he's got a few reps a, a week, but, but it's like, can you do this, Braylon? Wow, I'm going to give it a shot. So, and, but you just got to keep his confidence, and when those mistakes happen, get over it. We call that next play, next play. Keep playing. Next play, and um, God, that, that's an outstanding performance by him. Um, God, he probably almost had a 60, 70 yards rushing and a couple touchdowns, three, 
two, three touchdown passes. And when the the game comes down to that final play, what do you what do you say to your squad uh, when, when you call the timeout to, to be ready for that that final two point conversion try for Versailles? Yeah, that's a good question. I don't really do much with the defense, so I I just called the timeout, I guess, and and um, you know really at that point when 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 you play the game, you know it's going to go to throw to thirty or fifteen or seventeen uh, is uh, going to keep it at, uh, in some way, but still you got to stop them. It's only three yards, so. And uh, 17 is a heck of a he's a he's a heck of a player, very similar to David Homan from last week, and very similar to Marcel with the way I don't know how we I don't know how we stopped him, but but I uh, couldn't really see it too well. But so you get a, a pretty decent sized matchup next week against an um, undefeated Marion local squad. Uh, how do you feel about your team going into that, that week 10 matchup? Well, um, you know that's obviously going to be be difficult. Uh, you know with without Marcel most likely, um, but. You know we're not canceling the game because Marcel can't play, so so you know our defense is is playing well and and you get ready and and get get Braylon ready and and go play the game and and see what happens. Well, Chip, congratulations on the win. That's a that's a tough fought victory that uh, you guys uh, come out on top. But congratulations on a on a hard fought victory. Good, good. thanks, Garrett. That's Coldwater head coach Chip Otten joining us here as uh, the Cavaliers win 35-34 in double overtime and joined now by John Zerby. And, John, it's time to name our Stolle Insurance uh, Player of the Game, a Hustle Award winner, and, and I, I think we, we can all agree on, on, on who, that, who that was for the Cavaliers. <laughs> yeah, we decided Braylon Harlemer. I mean, Coach, and, and you, you, know, you kind of said it there. He didn't look like he maybe had taken a ton of reps, but just athletically came in put into a very difficult spot but we just thought you know his reaction and the way that he he battled back and just made some huge plays for the team really um, kept this team in the game but also kept your confidence in him as uh, the leader of the offense at that point yeah exactly um that, that was a that was a tough situation for him against a good team um, and to keep battling when he you know like I said he you know I think he threw one interception fumbled one mm -hmm. time but man you, you gotta you, you like to be in his head for those minutes and how fast everything goes and uh, the the other day uh, this week we played a couple a couple other receivers that trying to emulate number 17 and they get in there and you know everybody wants to be the quarterback and they did find I said would you learn about it? say, it's hard to be the quarterback <laughs> and and then now you throw throw Braylon in the game and uh, but but he's a he and his brother both are really really skilled guys who get get sports they're both really good baseball players and and they know how to play and and. Uh, and uh, you know he, he kept his poise the best he could, and and I kept telling him, God, you're all right. Come on, you're playing great. Keep keep going, because because you never know what's going to happen. And, and we saw you never know what's going to happen. <laughs> so the Cavaliers win 35-34, and Braylon Harlemert, our Stolle Hustle Award winner tonight. And John, final thoughts from this fantastic match Mac matchup. Well, you know, you just I guess you know it was our pleasure to call the game because you're not going to see games like this very often. And, and you know, it's always fun to watch a Mac uh, contest, but. A game like this where they're back and forth and both teams, like we said earlier, there's no moral victories or you know anything like that, but neither team really f yeah, felt like deserved to lose. They both okay. were just back and forth, and for Coldwater to come out here successful tonight, hats off to Coach Otten and their squad, and we wish them luck next week at Marion Local, but a great effort by Coach Jones and his uh, Versailles Tigers team. Nothing to be ashamed of. It's special for us to be able to call this game tonight. Absolutely. The final score, Coldwater 35, Versailles 34 in overtime. For our fantastic WOSN crew and John Zerby, I'm Garrett Seawright saying so long from Versailles here on WOSN. <laughs>